RWP is brought to you by Porch Beer Entertainment. No, two things. One, one's, one's real quick. Um, on my, I, I thought of this one as I was walking to your to your place from up up yonder was the sign that says twenty mile per hour and then children at play. It always makes me think. 20 mile per hour children at play. <laughs> like, we're just really fast kids the ball. R- sprinting around. Hey, mom. Hey. It always it always makes me think of that when I walk by. The other thing is, I also thought about this you today. Know how chaotic unloading a school bus at the top of the neighborhood would be if you just see a... Just like, these are just really fast kids. These are just like, these are... They uh, all look like Usain Bolt. <laughs> and so when people like drive through, they're like, oh, I should drive slowly because it says 20 mile per hour. It's like, no, no, no. They're 25, 20 mile per hour children. That's the unique situation where if you drive slower, the car sustains damage from the kid hitting Exactly. It. That's yeah. that's exactly right. Um, the other thing was, so we had a discussion today in the office um, in regards to Harry Potter. I assume you're familiar yep. with 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 the both the literature and the movies. I was more of a fan of the literature. Yeah, of course, of course, because you're a nerd. Um, so we were because the conversation was we were going around not the whole like oh what house were you like that everyone's done that but we were like what care like I was talking to Ricky who was on the podcast last week mm-hmm. and we were talking about which character from Harry Potter are you because I and I said Ron I said Ron Weasley for me I was like I'm immediately a Ron I mean I get sexier as the movies go through I'm the right. comic relief I get with Hermione clearly I'm Ron. Him, I said, you're either a Dementor or the <laughs> or that janitor guy with the cat. Uh, m- Mr. Finch? Yeah, he didn't appreciate that. Um, I was trying to think of you. So I feel like you may be in the Cedric Diggory realm. I was just about to say that because, one, I'm a uh, Ravenclaw. You're, you're a hunk. I thought you were about to say, one, I'm hot because no. you started saying the H word. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry, I meant to say uh, I, he was from Ravenclaw, wasn't he? Or something? No, he was from another school. Uh, oh, that's wasn't right. he? Yeah. No, well, no, he, no, no. He was from no, no. He, uh, I, <laughs> the nerds are freaking but, um, out. I was no, no. He to, was from. He I was, was going to say Hogwarts. Cedric Diggory because it'd be like um, something would happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Like I do some cool stuff, um, but like you did never heard about him until the actual Goblet of Fire, right? Like he right. just wasn't like a. But he right. was doing cool stuff. Um, so I'd be one of those background characters. You meet me, we have an adventure. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't die, but something happens to me. Yeah, that's that's kind of my line of thought. Yeah, um, because I think because the other thing that we um, that I was thinking while I was having this discussion with people, I was like, you know how annoying it would have been to be a muggle in the Harry Potter world and then like oh find God. out about like it, it what would, happened. <laughs> it would suck if you were a muggle and found out that magic was real. Yeah, and then like, it, but you weren't it's, And you had magic. no way of becoming that way. Because I think like towards the end of the books, like the bad people, and God, again, nerds are freaking out right now. They're like, you're saying everything wrong. Yeah, um, but we'll, we'll get some text. Uh, but there was, because then I feel like towards the end of the, the series, like the bad people were really like going after the muggles. Like, remember there was like... Indiscriminate killing. Yeah, because yeah. remember there was that so- big soccer tournament, or not soccer, Quidditch tournament, sorry, the World Cup. Yeah. And there were like attacks at the World Cup. But then I don't think muggles were there. No, they weren't. It was all magic. No, no. Magic so, but but there, was, there was definitely some muggle it magic was, crossover. Really, it was the ISIS of the Harry Potter world. Exactly. It was a terrorist cell. So it was like, but that's imagine, what the Death Eaters were. Imagine being that Muggle that's like, oh, so there is, there's magic, nice, nice. I'm glad, you know, none of us get to use it. <laughs> and they're How just do you, so upset? That's one thing. Um, and like, I think it's funny now that, um, like, I don't know if you've seen everything about like the J.K. Rowling recently and everything. How yeah, she's, she's like, like turning everybody gay. Everyone gay. She's just like, well, I didn't specify, so it was up to your imagination. I'm like, what? You sort of did specify a lot of things, but just because you didn't say it, yeah. she's just like, by the way, they're uh, dealing with all this backstory and all this other stuff, and we're like, that wasn't in the f-ing book. And <laughs> nobody was asking. I mean, like, again, nobody cares if they're gay or not, but that's the whole point is like, nobody cares. They're like, it's open. <laughs> she's like, it's open to interpretation. You interpret it however you want, but they are gay. And I'm like, well. J.K. Rowling strikes me as somebody who's just like tr- going to continue to try to stay relevant. Yes. Because like those books were like 10 years ago, like the last book or whatever. And I don't know if you're like the first one. It's like, because you see how it's like for any first book you read in a series yeah. or like anything you do, the first paper you wrote in college. Sure. And the last paper you wrote in college, like even if you're not a good writer, it gets better. And so like the writing style and how like short the books were. Yeah. And then it grew into like 
and encyclopedias. Yeah. And so there was more detail. There was more world building. But in the first two fucking books, it was like 180 pages. Yeah, it was very digestible. <laughs> it was like, oh, uh, I got a couple hours. Let me finish this book. Yeah, now it's like, oh, I need uh, two months vacation to read and, Harry Potter. And then she's backtracking saying, like, well, I wrote it so vague because, um, you know, you can take it however you want. I'm like, okay, I appreciate that. Whenever I'm reading a book or a story, I envision what the characters look like exactly. myself. Especially sexually. Yeah. For a children's series. Yeah. yeah, and, like, she's just, like, saying all I'm like, that's not something that, like, crossed my mind. And yeah. it's like, it didn't. And what it does to me, and maybe it's different for people who, um, who identify with that. Sure. But, like, it doesn't change the content no. of the book no 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 not you at know, all it doesn't like put a revolutionary spin oh, on it oh dumbledore wanted to <laughs> harry's dick. okay yeah. i get it now i get but it it's now. just like it didn't change the fundamental value of harry no. potter and so then i'm just like is there any value added no. in backtracking and doing that because it's like the whole thing is like cool and we're all like that's that's cool if that's yeah. what the character design was it's great Listen, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact i love harry potter it doesn't matter <laughs> no. whose character and what they sexually identify as or no. anything and she's like a drawing attention to it it's when just it's very supposed unnecessary to, it, it is because it's, it, it's, extremely it's doing the, it's doing the opposite yeah because yeah. instead of being like hey accept people for who they are she's just like taking the book and yeah. slamming it in your face being like they are lgbtq yeah hagrid and the wolves they were doing it they were doing it the whole series. Hagrid and the big yeah. dog, the three heads. It, it was, was wild. It was a Shrek scenario where yeah. the donkey f the dragon. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> no. all of this. But uh, yeah, I thought about that the other day because I was just like, I was reading something about J.K. Rowling. Everyone's making jokes about it. Sure. And these are all mostly jokes, but like they're good internet. It's good internet fodder right now because it it's is. like because the the meme is always like everyone and then like blank. Yeah. And then like J.K. Rowling like Snape was. Uh, screwing Lupin, and then yeah. it'll be like, oh, okay, well, that wasn't in the book, and none yeah. of us needed that, but thanks for that. <laughs> we appreciate that, J.K. It's great. What a, what a name, J.K. Rowling. Just kidding, Rowling. Just maybe kidding. maybe she's just messing around. She's yeah. just she's just tricking us all. Well, all, uh, of us, all of us HP lovers. I don't know if you saw the uh, the crimes of the Grindelwald, like the the no, Fantastic Beasts. No, I haven't Beasts. seen the new stuff. I didn't. I haven't. I on a plane. Okay, so when I was flying to Fort Worth. So it was really oh, oh, great. One of the plane movies? Um, no, no. So I was flying. So there and back, uh, we flew, I think it's like American Airlines. And honestly, they all have TVs in front of the seat. Oh, wow. And you can watch every, anything on there pretty yeah. much for free. There's some, there's, some there's some stuff you, you could. Card, there's yeah. some stuff you can, but they have a lot of free movies. But you know what's great is they turned off all the subtitle options. Ooh. And so they make you plug in the headphones. Yeah. And I just transitioned to AirPods a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and I don't own regular headphones anymore Ooh, you gotta always keep one backup pair and for so that. and also like uh airpods work off bluetooth so like i had to turn off my cell data in uh -huh. order to like but i couldn't oh. put on airplane mode otherwise yeah. i couldn't listen so i had to like the flight attendants are like this thing's going yeah. down it was somebody has so, their phone so, on airplane. yeah so i was like i was freaking out the whole time because i was like okay i'm just gonna turn off the cell data and I you saw, took a risk i saw a mythbusters episode where yeah. they're like they just it don't do like it. cell phones yeah. going it like it doesn't mess with the plane. It messes with, like, other stuff, like... The electronics? Yeah, like... I don't think of, it does anything, to be honest. Or, like, the Wi-Fi or something, but... Um, 2019, man. So, what was great is, like, I'm just, like, gr like fantastic. Yeah. So, I'm listening to podcasts. I am watching um, a movie on mine, and I am trying to lip-read. Ooh. Do you think you got... Pretty uh, good at that? Yeah, so uh, the first one I Hold on, let's, let's test. Let's test. All right, I'm going to like mouth something. You're going to have to tell me what it what I okay. said, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was great because I picked <laughs> Mad Max because there is oh, almost no dialogue. It's all action. It's all action. It didn't matter what they were saying. And you all, all you could and you could make out witness me and all this other stuff. But um, so I watched that and then uh, what was weird is I found myself watching... So in between the cracks of the seat, I found myself watching whatever the guy in front of me was watching. Oh. And like I was getting oh, because of the cracks. Yeah, okay. and like I didn't know what it was at first, and so I was getting like really engrossed into like I was like F whatever I have on, like I need to see this. Yeah. And it was uh, the Fantastic Beast, and when I saw that, I was like, man, and it was like it just, I don't know, it was weird. I just like I have haven't, zero I haven't gotten into interest. the new ones. Yeah, I haven't gotten into the new ones. 
Like, I'm sure they're good. I'm sure people like it's them. It's like Fast and Furious. It's like they keep making it. You and know, they in do the, a spin off. In the new, like, Fast and Furious movies, like, there's going to be a superhero in it. I think Idris Elba is going to play an actual superhero in the Fast and Furious. What? So they're going to, like, leave reality, and they're not that they haven't already, um, but, uh, and they're going to, like, actually introduce, like, the supernatural. It's probably to get on the Avengers train because they're yes. trying to get some of the publicity. 100%. There. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is like, yeah. it, so there's some originals, and you're like, wow, that was great. And yeah. so, like, if you look at the totality of, like, the HP series, it's <sighs> like she bottled, like, gold lightning, yeah. like, golden lightning, and was like, sweet. And that's then, the greatest thing she'll ever do in her life. Was the that's Harry just Potter it. And series. then it's just like, oh, and then, then it just becomes like, how can we make this series more money. bleed more money and so yeah. you like twist it and so what they did with the um like the hobbit franchise yeah because like uh so at least like, with that they were like actual a die hard you know, to go with lotr you know? guy yeah yeah and like the books and the books are so goddamn detailed like yeah. not um not the hobbit in general the hobbit yeah. is a hundred and like maybe 150 pages yeah it is so quick and mm-hmm. there are you know there's like appendixes and all this other stuff that you can go get that yeah, that builds the world because he built the whole world but The Hobbit, yeah. um, they also made a cartoon movie of it forever ago. Oh, yeah. I vaguely remember. You yes. know they're making a TV series, too, for yeah. Lord of the Rings. And so I'm just like, how did you... You took this tiny book, yeah, and you yeah. did take some some other stuff from like weird... It, it was basically things that were sort of going on at yeah. the same time as The Hobbit. Completely different story, and they force-fed it into The Hobbit. Money. And turned it into this... Like I watched it and I enjoyed the action, yeah. but like I honestly did not enjoy the Hobbit series because I think they butchered it. Yeah, they're doing a Lord of the Rings like live action I will TV watch series. That. Yes, I'll watch that as well. If it, they if they start to take it in a really bad direction, I'm gonna stop. Are you, you're you're not a Game of Thrones guy, right? Neither am I. I'm not. No, I okay. uh, I, w- I watched like the first two seasons, I think, okay. and then I kind of just kind of got off that train. But uh, we also were watching it pretty much after it came out, so like I had to wait sure. for the other season. Yeah, I haven't seen any of it. I haven't and, seen any um, of it. I'm, I'm familiar with like all the memes, though. Like I know what's going on right yeah. now. I kind of know like who spoiled. dies yeah. and who has sex and all that stuff. Um, so. We have a lot to get to on the show today, so I don't want to spend too much more time that's, that's dilly dallying. Um, you said you had a rough day at work. Is it just like really sh- like just crazy? busy, man? There's so what happens in this business is um, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, clients that we have will make like threats, like they'll be like, "Hey, <laughs> like." Like extortion, kind of. Like they'll be like, "Hey, if you don't do this one thing for me, like I'm gonna," because now in today's day and age on social media, like now people can be like, "If you don't do this thing for me that I want you to do, I'll go after you on social media." And then companies, oh. like especially small businesses, don't want that to happen, right? Because if you're a giant corporation, it's like go f- off. Like we're we're Apple. Like we don't give a sh- about what you say. But if you're like a smaller business, you're like, oh, one person's like bad press could actually like affect us. So then we always have to end up doing things. And this guy's like unstable like it's wild it's a wild scene man so i'm dealing with that and then like a couple good things that are happening at work and then we're also eight days away from closing on the house yeah my advice to those out there don't buy a house don't do it there's so many steps are you getting there's so many steps i'm I'm extremely nervous i'm nervous about the fact that i'll have no money just like no money Mm -hmm. anymore it'll be like money has been a wonderful thing in my life and (laughs) now i'm gonna buy a house with nothing inside of it and um just live on the floor yeah. I'd be like, at least I've got a house. I'm the king of the, the yeah. trash can kingdom. Um, I'm very... That's a, that's the neighborhood. I'm also nervous trash can because kingdom. we're in a situation where the lady's not leaving yet. She's like promised that she's leaving at some point. But like... You know what I'd love in, to like, see writing. is after you buy the house, <laughs> she, she just, just never, never leaves. leaves. Yeah. And like that's you'll, you'll move of. in and like... Because uh, there's, there's like an extra bedroom, right? Yeah, there's two bedrooms. So you, you'll move in and like yeah. start setting stuff up, and she's gonna come out of that bedroom and be like, "Hey, so, hey roomies!" Yeah. And like, what if she didn't even mention the fact she was, she was like, there? "This was in the contract. You didn't read yeah. like page 192." And she's like, "Hey guys, here's a list of house rules. Like, I don't want to be that roommate, but the best thing about those contracts is, I don't read any of them. There's like so much information. There's like hundreds of information, and I'm just trusting these vital people in the process to just be like, "Yeah, no, this is normal stuff. It's fine. Just sit, just sign." Yeah. It. Yeah. Because like th- I can't read everything. Like I read <laughs> I read the important ones, like the money part. You're basically um, clicking I have read to and agree to the terms and conditions. Yeah. yeah. Without reading them yeah. on like an actual like because like there's not a lot of consequences yeah. for uh, oh what, you're gonna track my location? The exactly. government already tracks yeah, your yeah, location. I don't care. Like it's a thing. Like I don't put the little sticky on my camera. Look at me. I, that's right. like, I talked about it on the show. But like yeah. you're doing that on like a grand scale in real life. Oh yeah, yeah. And then like 
I had to switch insurance companies, and uh, that was fun because you, the original insurance company obviously doesn't want you to leave that all, insurance. Yeah. And like, so the guy at the new insurance company told me, he's like, here's a trick, man. And he's a very slick businessman. He's like, yeah. look, man, here's, here's what you got to do when you switch. He's like, all you got to do is you got to tell these guys that your buddy sells insurance and you're buying it from him, and that's why you're switching, and that's the reason. Because they're not going to give you any shit for that, and it will turn a 20-minute conversation into a two-minute conversation. This was partially true, but when I told them that, then I got into like a quiz, basically, with the original insurance people. They're like, oh, what insurance company yeah, does grill he work you. for? They grill And then you. they're like, was well, it about price or the fact that it, what is, what's he doing for you that we can't do? And then suddenly it's did like a not, jealous girlfriend. Did you not work the table to get you a better deal? Um, no, so I got. I'm saving money with the new insurance. Oh, okay. That's, so no, no, fine, yeah. no. So I'm, I'm, I'm not paying more to to leave, but um, I'm paying less. But they like it was one of those things. And one of the tricks that they'll do is they'll be like, uh, once you tell them, once you go through the five different prompts to finally get to somebody where you're like, hey, I'm leaving you. Insurance will be like, okay, well that's actually handled by this department, so I'm gonna send you over there. And then they send you over there, make you wait like ten minutes. Yeah, they on wait the you line. out. Yeah, they put you on. As the... if you're gonna like change your mind. You're like, God, this, you know, this has really got me thinking. <laughs> Especially this music in the background. It's like, boom, boom, don't leave. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. We need to feed our families. Boom, yeah. boom. Um, and then the guy comes on the line, and then he's just like, oh, so I hear you're leaving the insurance. And it's like, yeah. This hey, is... Jim. Hey, come <laughs> up here. I'll put on speaker. Ben's leaving. <laughs> Ben's leaving. It's like I've never yeah. actually spoken. Then the guy's to any like, what, guys. Ben? Ben is leaving. Wait, wait, Ben. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, and then, like, I told the guy that I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm switching over. And he's like, oh. That guy's going to be outside your window, Jerry Maguire with a boombox oh, over his head. <laughs> and, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. You know, like, and then I used the line. I'm like, yeah, my buddy sells insurance. But I kind of fumbled the words a little bit because, like, the guy's not my buddy. I just started talking to this guy. And I was just like, yeah, my, my friend, my buddy, this guy, yeah, uh, he sells insurance. And they're like, oh. What what type of uh, what type of insurance does he s- and blah 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 and so it ter- it ended up being like a fifteen minute long conversation and then they sent me to this other person and they brought a third person on the line yeah. and she was like okay um so he's trying to leave uh for the insurance um Brenda here she's gonna help you do that and she was like all right well in order to leave you need we need proof that you're you you have insurance now and then I'm like oh really, like, Not really I don't yeah. think you need you, that you don't <laughs> and then they like and then the, here's the last thing is they send you an email with like the, the the signing documents where you have to be like I'm leaving and then sign it and then uh, they don't let you do so they email you the documents but you can't email the documents back to them you have to physically mail the documents back to them and I, I questioned them on this I was like wait 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 so you're emailing me the documents I sign I can't email them back to you. They're like, yep, that's right. You have to, you have to mail them. Can't scan it in. I was like, yeah. wait, wait, wait. But you're emailing them to me. Can I just email it right back to that email? She's like, nope, no, you have to scan it in. Or, no, not scan it. You, you have to print it out, sign it, and physically it's amazing. mail it. It's amazing. I made Abby do it. Could do it because I was like, I haven't mailed a letter in probably about 15 years. I have no idea how to do it. Um, but I got it. We switched over. We're eight days away. It's big. Yeah. This is this is big. This is it's big. a countdown. Even though we won't physically be living there yet, but uh, can't wait to use your truck. Can't yeah. wait. That's going to be clutch. That's going to be clutch. I'm going to give you a lot of Port City uh, for cool. that. We'll get Nick involved to carry everything. It'll be well, it'll be a blast. We moved Nick two f-ing times. If Nick doesn't yeah. pick up one goddamn box, yeah. and you guys helped me that one time, and I appreciate that. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that all goes. That's a conversation for another day. Cool. Let's kick things off here. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you feeling on this Thursday? Well, what are we? What are we kicking off with? We kind of just. I haven't really decided. I think you've been feeling it out on your end because we do the fun fact at the end or the phrase at the end. It's the phrase at the end. The phrase that pays. 99.5. What is it? What is the phrase? <laughs> um, yeah, how would you like to... No, uh, I just don't remember what I did for the last two. Sure, sure. No, I'm glad you're paying attention to the show that we do together. Uh, it's been fun, right? Here, how about I send you away to the ooh, melodious ooh. sounds of... Of you drinking beer? <laughs> All aboard Trains the coming Random in. Word Podcast. There's a guy on the tracks. <laughs> that works. Yeah, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff. Arise! Arise! Fight as shall be shaken! Shields shall be splintered! A sword day! A red day! And the sun rises! 
broadcasting from the porch or the basement or whatever realm hasn't banished them yet. It's the Random Word Podcast with your hosts, Ben and Salty Dalton. Welcome back to the Random Word Podcast, Season 4. This is Episode 33 with your hosts, Ben and Salty Dalton. Yeah, good to be here. And then we just like start doing like a... Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on here. Uh, it's been fantastic. What a ride. What God. a ride, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first episode of the season where we actually aren't having somebody come on the show. It's yeah, it's just you been a lot of unexpected guests. I know, I know. But I feel like uh, the listeners like, and actually judging by the emails we got, which we'll read later, uh, people, we got some good feedback for the couple guests. I did talk to Ricky later the next day. And did he, he was enjoy like, it? He went yeah. back and listened. He's like, man, I did not realize how uh, intoxicated I was <laughs> when I came on the show and i was like oh yeah man you were pretty drunk and he was like thank god i came on the show because i was way too drunk to drive home and i was like this this podcast saved a life yeah it did it That's saves fun. a lot of lives yeah it does it does um again as salty dalton said this is the random word podcast find us on instagram at uh at the random word podcast and then facebook the random word podcast uh rwp and on email the random word blog at gmail.com we got a lot of emails uh, so I'm excited to read those. So well, maybe it helps because we had that spike in popularity. And you know what's supposed to wow. air this weekend is the ad we have on those Endgame guys, Chuck and Brad. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? The, the, you mean our? You mean they're going to promote us? You think? Yeah, that's oh. what the ad swap is. So yeah, we we yeah. played their their. And now they're going to they said during they would do the it. live performance. They're going to be like, hey, uh, here's a few. Folks, they're probably going to be like, that did the ad swap for us. We should Here's- Photoshop ourselves on their poster and be like, hey, do you mind like updating your, your yeah, posting? And we like should. Put, put our faces like in the corner. They're like, oh, yeah, that's not what we were talking about. We just wanted you to play. No, the, it was an ad swap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're part of the show. We just show up at their podcast. Like, we're here. Where do you want us to sit? We have all the uh, the equipment in your duffel bag. And then we're standing off to the side. Doing and our podcast. They're already doing the podcast. <laughs> and we go like, what the f- Dude, <laughs> we just start doing our show while they're doing their show. Hey guys, um, yeah, we come out on stage. Thank you, thank you. We do hope you listened to that promotion last week. Again, we're doing an yeah, ad they're swap. doing a, they're recapping <coughs> the the Avengers, Avengers series yeah. all via like uh, just comedic retellings. Yeah. It, it sounds like something that would be up our alley. To be yeah, honest, it, if it was yeah. closer, if it wasn't like in New York City, we I'd probably go. Yeah, um, but it's in New York City. But if you are in New York City, Boston, Philly, I think those are like the Make three sure locations. Make sure you got this weekend. Definitely the check Chuck it and out. Brad uh, podcast. I don't. I don't know where I forget. All I, it wasn't places. on iTunes. Do we it have was, to play it again? Or no, is it just no, a no, one-time no. thing. It was a one-time thing. Okay, yeah. Um, but we we do have to play because we do have to introduce the listeners to the word. Is this week? No, hey, not yet. Here we that? go. I remember spent all my bit? time. I do remember that bit. Oh. 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 Your word is chicane. Chicane, not chicanery, just chicane. Chicane. Not Shakira, chicane. Chicane, so uh, C-H-I-C-A-N-E, chicane. Uh, It's a verb, and it means uh, to use deception, to trick or to cheat. You know what, I keep forgetting to like hit the applause after you say the word. Is that a thing? Maybe it never was. I keep forgetting because it's never happened. <laughs> I kind of like it. Yeah, um, it's nice. It's wait, wait. Recognized. What's the definition? I missed it. <laughs> uh, so it's a verb, and it means okay. to use deception, deception, to trick, or to cheat. Wow. So uh, <laughs> you could say that um, illusionists uh, really... Magic. Magic. Uh, when you go to a magic show, really, it's just a bunch of different types of chicane. One of the best Netflix documentaries that I watched was called Magic Camp. And it followed the is these that? like five or six kids at like varying ages who all were going to magic camp for the summer. And it's like one of those things where like they're all like obviously nerds in their daily lives at home. But when they go to magic camp, they're, they like they're just... LeBron James, like like the nerdiest, like weirdest kid at magic camp is like a sex god. At Magic Camp, because he's he's just like, oh, which card did you pick? And they're like, oh my god! It takes a lot of practice, dude. That's the whole thing. All these kids do, and I'm not making fun of them, because like, if you practice that much at something, I have full respect for you. And literally, these kids will go to school, and then they'll. One of them, it was a little weird because there was like the owner of a magic shop in town. He's kind of like an older grizzled guy, and he owned mm. this maggot shop. Uh, maggot shop, actually. Um, and the kid, kid you want some maggots? <laughs> no, I just want cards. No, I thought this was a magic shop. <laughs> Read the damn sign. It's a maggot shop. Um, this this kid after school goes to the magic shop with this o- older older man like every day 
till like 10 p.m. at night. Then he goes home with his actual family. What the? F- Wait. And practices magic. Oh, okay. There. He well, doesn't just weird. like hang out with them. <laughs> just, well, me and the maggots. Um, and he like practices every day for hours. And there's an actual competition on the last day of camp. And like the goal is to win you know, the camp award for best magician, I guess. And it's a pretty stiff competition. I bet. Yeah. I mean, did you ever partake? Cause I, I yeah, definitely so, had one of those small magic. So books I up. had, um, uh, I went through a stretch of insomnia in high school. I remember this. Yeah. So I would barely <clears throat> sleep maybe like hour or two, something like that. So like how I filled my time, how I filled the empty void that was yeah. not sleep was like, um, and I trust me, I tried a million different things besides going to an actual sleep doctor because I was like, this isn't real. So it's going it's, to a I'm professional. Fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, so my self medication was like magic. I tried <laughs> everything, but then eventually I was just like, F- it. if I'm not going to sleep, yeah. I'm going to do something with that time. And I chose uh, to learn magic. Wow, that's so, a great. Like, think with, first. Of, think of all the different options you had. You could I learn know. a new language. I could have written you a could book. Have, you know how you could have gotten straight A's. A hundred percent. You could have gotten straight yeah, A's. I mean, you would have spent your there time were a studying. Lot of, yeah. So I all I did <laughs> you was you went with magic. I opened up my laptop. And I, I pulled up uh, the, the oracle known as YouTube how-to videos. Yeah. Oh, and, classic. Um, I've learned many things. Yeah, and YouTube. literally, I just kept watching different magic tricks. And um, I never got, like, super great at them. I can only do yeah. a few because, like, some of them were really intricate. Yeah. And, like, keep in mind, like, I'm, like, my body is, like, so tired because yeah. it hasn't gotten It's sleep not really the best time in my mind. So I'm just, capacity. like, I'm, like, what the f- How do you do this? <laughs> so there was only, like, two that... Um, uh, I got okay at like I could make a card disappear. See, I was Where more you flick it behind your and you I hold was, it back here. Yeah, I was yeah. more interested in like the sleight of hand type stuff yeah. because I. But like I'm not amazing at sleight of hand. But no. I was like the the amount of steps you have to do for like some of those intricate like is this your card? Yeah. Um. So I taught myself some, and there was one trick I got really good at. Is this card trick? It was um. You had these three blank cards, and I don't remember if I ever did it for you guys in college, but it was it was called this, that, and other. Okay. Those were the three names of the cards. Sure. Um, and so, really, what you do is a sleight of hand. So you they're in a certain order, and then you you show it really quick, and you do this flip thing, and you have the story that goes with it, where it's like a. Um, the story is a distraction. Yeah, like uh, let me tell you about a story about life. Like you get a little yeah. bit of this, you get a little bit of this, and you get a little bit of that, and you're always hiding the other card, uh-huh. but you're making it look like you have to this car and then you do like but sometimes you get some of that and sometimes you get some of that and you do that twice and they're like where the f*** did you get the second that card and you go like so then you must be thinking I have all hand movements yeah and then you go you must be thinking I have two that cards two this cards but really I just have three cards it's that card that card that card Uh and the way you do it it was really cool and the ending was the best because you're like because in life you get a little bit of this, you flip it over, it says this. You get a little bit of that, yeah. you flip it over. And then other. But not much of the other. And you drop oh, that wow. down and people are like, what the f***? Lose their minds, yeah. man. Uh, so I, those are like the only ones I really did. But yeah, during that stretch, like I would just devour magic videos and yeah. be like, this is crazy. Yeah, I got one of those little magic kits once where you like. I've seen those, like, like, I don't know how well that, because that, that's like prop magic. And I feel like yeah. all it takes is one Hole to just be like, <laughs> let me see that one yeah. dick, and like snaps it open. See there are flowers inside. Because there's like a thing with like the cups and balls, and there's always like little oh, secret yeah, compartments yeah, yeah. for the balls, and it'll be like there's no ball here, and then you move it around. So only there's a ball there because you like put some pressure and knock that ball out of its secret com- compartment yeah. and stuff like that. And then like magnet stuff. It's wild to me that um, there are well the craziest ones are always like the Chris Angel stuff like yeah, you watch those Mind shows Freak, but yeah. then you're like it's says on TV so it's like they could literally do anything with this um, but I, I like the big there was that guy the, that did a Netflix thing it was Justin something you should watch that on Netflix it's like oh god I forget what it's called um, but it's like he's he's pretty funny like he does like kind of almost like not sexual magic um, he's <laughs> like go where'd my penis go <laughs> um, oh god no, no he does this like um I don't know. I can't even describe it. But he does some funny stuff. And uh, so it's weird. I feel like Magic has, like, made a little mini comeback because of, like, Netflix it has, and no, YouTube because, and like, stuff. Yeah, and uh, Instagram and stuff. Like, there's a guy yeah. on Instagram who does these, like, allu- like mini illusions. Yeah. Oh, Justin Dean? Yeah. Yeah. Or something like that. I and follow him. The does, British like, guy? Yeah. With the glasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, can yeah. we both follow that guy? Yeah. Yeah, I watch him all the time. And he'll, like, do it with celebrities and stuff. And he'll, like, do Yeah, and he'll magic. do, like, crazy stuff. And, like, he did. He went to, like, uh, 
Hey, he must have been like in like he uh, goes like all Africa over the country, or something. Yeah, yeah. And he did this Little thing world. where he pulled the Snickers bar out. Yeah. And the girl's like, what? Dude, the best is It's when just like little stuff like that is cool. Like, cause I'm sure it takes some setup and yeah. like you have to be quick or like someone else has to be in on it. But if you can do the ma- magic trick anywhere, like I yes. respect for you. If you're able yes. to pull that off any audience anywhere, like that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like little tricks like that I think are really awesome. And it's like the, the big extravagant magic shows. Yeah. It's just like. Eh. Yeah, and then but one thing that guy does that we're talking about, Justin Dean, I think is his name, or Jules Dean, or something. It might be Jules something. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he'll also do tricks for like really drunk people at like festivals. Oh, they and stuff. freak out, and it's yeah. like it's like yeah, I don't not think you even need they, to do the not trick. Not only are they like uh, just blown out of their mind, yeah, they're like just hammered because they'll too. be uh, hammered probably on some other stuff too because he'll go to like these big music festivals like and edm type yeah like uh but yeah, it's pretty good Fire yeah Fest. it is jules jules dean but yeah like like you said i like that type of magic where it's like on the street yeah this is real quick it freaks you out and then they move on and you don't spend a lot of time thinking about like oh show me exactly how it's done because like yeah. the more times you do it you understand it's like the whole part of magic is to be like check out this cool thing oh that was cool yeah and then you just don't really like you're not sitting there being like yeah well I know how that was done. The the crazy one that I remember watching, I forget which magician it was, might have been David Blaine, where it was the one with the bullet, where like he had to catch a bullet like in his teeth, and it was from shot from oh, like a certain distance. That actually, you know what's crazy is uh, I've been uh, I've been looking at uh, listening to this other like history podcast yeah. and they did one about some magicians and that's actually like a really famous because people magicians have died they've died yeah. doing it it's actually a really really famous one yeah and yeah. that's what he talks about in the in the little special or whatever where he's like they, yeah they, a lot of magicians have died doing this because most try to catch it with their hand they do this thing where they catch it with yeah. their hand but they're actually firing a bullet on stage mm-hmm. and like sometimes uh people aren't loading it right too and so yeah. they'll actually fire like the bullet and he does it with he did this one where it was literally going to be in his like he was holding a little thing in his mouth and the bullet was going to go into this like this thing to capture it and it was going to be in his mouth and that was the trick which is kind of like there's really i don't know but that's magic i think that's like i like uh geometry i guess like the or right illusion thing. yeah but like uh and then there's always the ones where like the magician like locks himself in a tank of water for like seven days that stuff isn't as like um it's not as cool to me because no. you can't see what they're doing right. Because I'm like a real visual learner, yeah. and like I like if you get in a f- box and put chains around, like I, it's like Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. It's like I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you in could there. be watching Netflix, or you could not even be in there. Yeah, it could have just been a hologram game. of you stepping in, and then the you're just like going around like, the audience, and you're just like, wow, that guy's really doing it. And right? it gets so extra because they're like, yeah. not only am I stabbing this with swords, I'm dropping it off this skyscraper. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm it will be setting it on fire. Yeah, it'll be set on fire. Yeah. Where then elephants will ride and stomp on it. <laughs> That's always the one that gets me. And it's the, like you would have died after the first one, man. So let's get on with it because, like, if I wasn't gonna believe that, I don't know what the rest is gonna add. The here. reappearance stuff is always what what is always weird to me. Like when it's always like I went into this box and then suddenly I appear over here. I'm always like, how does that happen? Yeah, that that part is cool. And like even if it's underground passages, it's just the fact that you yeah. don't notice them rejoining. Yeah. Because sometimes they'll be like in the crowd and be like, just be, have their arm around like somebody. Yeah, be like, like what's up, dude? For me? Like, oh my god, he's right. Yeah. yeah, it's that. That's that's pretty cool. So what's the word again? Uh, chicane. 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 To use deception to trick or cheat. Shakira. Shakira. Um, chicane is the word. We Magicians didn't to, are out to chicane you. They are. That's literally their job. That is their um, job. We didn't get to do this last week, so I'm glad we get to promote these guys this week. We got a couple sponsors to shout out here. Um, and uh, Salty, why don't you start with the first one? Okay. Um, we've been there. Um, Maybe you're moving to a new city. You've got a new job. Um, you're in a part of town that you don't find yourself in that often. But guess what? Your tummy's are rumbling. Yeah. And the thunder's coming and you're hungry. So I'm going to tell you about an incredible service that's partnered with the Random Word Podcast. It's called Eat Local. It's Yelp for locals only, bro. Locals only. Locals only. Uh, so it's basically um, it's a Yelp system. Uh, but the only people allowed to leave reviews are people who live within the radius you're searching. You're going to get the true, honest opinion of the neighborhood, and you're not going to get all these bots and these inflated, um, mm-hmm. you know, reviews and these 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 fake reviews or the ones that you can pay money for. This is the true essence of what yep. the restaurant is where you're trying to eat. Always eat smart. Eat local. Uh, and right now, um, if you put in the promo code RWP when you're downloading it off the App Store, 
you will get access to a special Yelp badge that has both of our faces on it. So it does. Uh, make sure you eat smart, eat local. Eat local. Next one here. I'm on the train. I'm coming home. I'm excited. I'm going to get to go do the podcast with my best friend. That's oh, me. There's going to be some Port City on tap. Yeah, man. Interesting, interesting. Well, oh, man. I got one, a seat next to me. This is fantastic. I don't have to worry. But then there's a guy that hops on the train, and uh, he's definitely sucking his thumb and wearing a diaper. I really hope he doesn't sit next to me. He's got those what? crazy eyes. He will not, because you have the inflator person. You pull it out of your bag, you blow it up, and now you've got a social buffer. The inflator person is a person. It looks exactly like a person, not a sex doll. It's, it looks like a person. You don't have sex with it. It's just an inflatable <laughs> thing. You put it on the seat next to you. Now that guy can't sit there. This is your social buffer for creating peaceful commutes through social isolation. The Inflata Person. Get yours 20% off by entering the code RWP at inflataperson.com. That's RWP at inflataperson.com. Get yours today. Nice. Don't you wish you had an Inflata Yeah, person? I wish I had one every day on my commute. Have you have you recently had to sit next to any strange? Yeah, so I've uh, in the mornings, um, there's a... Probably like a seventy percent chance I can secure a seat by myself. Yeah. Um, but um, sometimes you split with people. But what's great about like the, the the train I take is like people are coming there from like uh, all the way down from past Manassas, Stafford, oh, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Because it stretches that whole thing. There are two different trains, and imagine that commute. They get in there and they just they sleep. They sleep <clears> until they get yeah. to their stop, and they're like, "Cool!" And like, no one bothers anyone, so it doesn't bother me when I have to sit next to somebody. Yeah. Um, but in the mornings, generally unbothered. On the way home, I will always have to sit next to somebody yeah. until they filter off, and I get to my stop. Nice, nice. But um, no, I would love an inflated person because uh, I mean, I'm not gonna have to worry anymore. That's good. That's good. Buy and your you inflated person. Don't have sex with it. You could even like lean on it, like you're kind of leaning on someone's shoulder. Yeah, you could. You could. You could fall asleep on that. But do yeah. not do anything do not, beyond yeah, that. Yeah, it's not. Please, built, it's not built. Don't for that. ruin the inflated person name. Um, it is time to get to a, a segment that we got kind of cut off with this segment last week because of the, the surprise Ricky appearance and all that stuff. I want to do some justice to it this week. We've got the time. Let's get into a little bit. A Salty Dalton's incredible brain explosion full body learning experience. What? Well, Wait, you, that's not the music for it, is it? I don't know. I mean, I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, you also kind of said the title of it, so do I reintroduce it, or do we just let it play out? Hold on one second. Let me see if I... Excuse us for technical <laughs> difficulties. This actually sounds like... Oh, it's this one. Dun, there it dun, is. Now, I'll let dun, you dun. <laughs> reintroduce it. Remember, you got to give it some time to play the piano, because then here it comes. And then he's like, "When do I go?" You'll, you'll, you'll hear it. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, welcome into Salty Dalton's incredible brain explosion, full body learning experience. Hiya! Thank you, thank you, guys. Welcome into another installment of uh, that really long title. Um, yeah. So this is just like little tidbits, uh, just like fun stuff, little trivia pieces that you can take with you. Yeah, we've covered um, the knockers, the people that were the assigned knocker uppers, yeah. to specifically um, wake people up by knocking on their door. We like, talked about Pope Gregory the Ninth. Yes, really hated cats. Absolutely murdered a lot of cats. To the point where he murdered a lot of them. They were like, man, that's a lot of cats yeah, dead so, on the road. Um, I was thinking about work when I was researching this Ugh, stuff. and so Gross. <laughs> it made me think about the knocker uppers, and I was like, what are some other just real weird jobs that Ooh. people have had in history yeah. right and so i'm looking and like i found these two and there's um granted like you know this isn't going to be full-blown research so these aren't we don't expect long excerpts you. um so this is actually there's the one I'm, uh, i have two here and these these two occupations um one of these is kind of debated on whether or not it was truly real there are like scholars who are just like this is a real thing and they hint at it throughout history but like none of them really just have a detailed account of this sure, sure. and there's probably reasons why but have you ever heard the term the whipping boy yes so like you yes. know i don't want to be the whipping boy for this exactly. so um i looked up the whipping boy um because <laughs> i kind of want to know where that came from yeah um and so at at some point in in early like kind of modern europe um i'll probably say like 
uh, probably when they were lords and castles and stuff, sure. stuff like that, like nobility. Right around knocker upper time. Yeah, it kind of, kind of, probably like a little before that, probably like fifteen hundreds. Sure. There's, there's a couple different reports. It mostly dealt around nobility. So okay. if you were a person of status, um, this might apply, okay. or it did apply at some point. Um, so generally speaking, if you were a prince, um, a prince or or something like that, um, you would get educated, right? Um, so you'd have you'd have all different types of classes. You'd have personal tutors that teach you, you know, swordplay, chivalry, all this other stuff. Okay. Um, how to be a noble. And so these kids, these kids would um, these these princes and stuff. So they'd be educated, right? So they'd have a tutor come in. But but there's a fundamental issue with this because the tutor um, might be one of the smartest people in the kingdom, but they are still below the kid in terms of status. Ooh, true. So a tutor cannot enforce anything, um, and uh-huh. they can't lay a hand on nobility. So what what they came the workaround they came up with is that they would bring in another kid of the oh, same no. age. No, they bring another kid of the same age. See, they they get all that great education too. So uh-huh. it could be it could be another noble kid, something like that, someone who is just not a prince. Yeah. Um, they'd bring him in. They'd educate him alongside. Oh no! And if the if the prince were to step out of line, <laughs> oh, they would receive all the corporal punishment in place of the royalty. Oh my god! Um, so because the tutor was still under the rank of the prince, uh, so the prince couldn't be hit directly, but yeah. the prince could maybe be hit emotionally uh-huh. by watching another kid get the shit beat out of him. Wow! For that guy, and I feel like that could go one of two ways. One that could maybe work, and the other could be like. That prince could be really sadistic and be like, "I'm just gonna get this kid murdered." Yeah, that's um, the thing. Like that kid could be literally yeah, like. Yeah, so it's just you and Jeremy, and like you, uh, you tell a joke and like, uh, like "Hey, I'm I'm here. I'm uh, I, I just got assigned to the classroom. I am, you know, uh, gonna be." You know the the second boy in in, in the room. I'm, yeah, I'm welcome. Here. Please please take your seat. Yeah, they told the uh, prince here. There prince. was kind of a weird. There was kind of a weird part of the explanation of, of this job. No, you 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 get taught. Um, sure, we're sure. Learn yeah, a tell lot me of how really it goes. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's just that that's just it. We're gonna get a lot of really good stuff. Just okay. Um, okay. Um, you just really want to. Yeah, it seems sh- like a great education. Just just make sure that the prince kind of stays in line. Um, oh, don't so don't touch him or anything. But yeah, just, no, like, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Just um just yeah just watch out for that. Um, watch out for 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 what? And and like maybe the prince just just goes like hey you suck and then the teacher's like oh awesome well here uh yeah. you want you to come here real quick? sure yeah, yeah. You just no do you need something yeah just just come oh. up here real quick okay yeah yeah, and yeah. We just um so this is this is a this is a this is a stick right yeah 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 and then, i've seen that okay i'm just gonna beat you with this <laughs> wait, 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 wait 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 hold on wait, no why, this why is are you... the job uh, oh okay hey uh prince do you, you see this you see what i'm about to do <laughs> oh just... god ow, ow. <laughs> yeah don't do that again or i will kill him <laughs> um yeah god. so it would just be like i mean could you imagine um, going to this classroom? Like your parents would be like, "Yeah, you're gonna learn alongside this prince. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. get gonna all this great, great opportunity." And I'm sure, like, it, they learned a lot of good stuff. But like, uh-huh. imagine if the prince just like drops his quill on the ground. Yeah, what if he's just an absolute dick? And then like, yeah. all of a sudden, they're just like, "Jeremy, could you come to the front?" And he just decks you in the jaw, <laughs> and is like, <laughs> "Is like this hurts me more than it hurts you, yeah, kid." I have to do this, man. He, and, like, he dropped his the, crown. So I think like the only way this is effective is to like. If they make this guy best friends with the prince. Yeah. Because that's the only other way. Other than that, the prince is going to be like, I can do whatever I want. Oh, yeah. And Jeremy will be whipped. And so the, the common form of punishment at the time was actually just whipping, like, but excessive whipping. So yeah. it's just like, oh, you got to be on your test. Whoosh, stop it. Whoosh. And you just you just do and that. It's not even it's not even you got to be on the test. It's literally the prince got like an F, and he's like f- flicked off the teacher, yeah. and now you get whipped, and you you're like, oh, I got an A, and yeah, nobody and so cares. It's basically a punishment proxy. Um, oh my god! So like, uh, and so it's it's hinted um, in like some journals and stuff Kinda like that. Kind of feels like, like how I got through high school. In a way. It's insane. <laughs> like I could not imagine that being like it. How did you just? I mean, maybe for the education, but like, what parent is just like? But well, also I in that time period, it's like, did you really need the education, or did yeah. you really need to know how to just like make a sword? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> this is the most valuable thing you could bring to our town. It's like, well, I know how to read a book. And it's like, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> witchcraft. <laughs> yeah, nobody needs to know that. Yeah. Um. So that one was pretty strange. Um. Wow. Yeah. And then wow. um, the resurrection. Oh, sorry. So the next job. Um, is something I'd heard oh, you of, have multiple. Okay. I've heard about yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So there's two. Sure. Uh, this one's called a uh, resurrectionist. Okay. That was a job. Um, <laughs> so let me paint the picture. So I'm guessing it, a the, job that nobody was really. This good was at. more <laughs> common in about the 18th century, yeah. and it didn't go long. It didn't go on for like super long. 
Um, but basically, they were the opposite of an undertaker. Okay. So they exhumed bodies. Oh, okay. like professionally. Interesting. For men of science. So, um, <laughs> or in that time, around the you know 18th century and 17th century, like so, we knew jack about the human body. Yeah. We'd be like, well, there are demons in your blood. Yeah, clearly um, you're dead. Go stick some leeches on your nipples and you'll feel better or you'll die. Yeah. Um, and they literally thought Ooh, like bronchitis nice. was like, like an affliction of the you. devil. Yeah, they yeah. were just like, well, God thought that you were just going to die. Yeah, that cat, that black cat that walked like, they by, didn't know that, how, that gave you cancer. They didn't know so. how, the, yeah, they didn't know how brain worked. They were yeah. just like, I don't know, man. Like, uh, God, what idiots. Drink <laughs> this poison, you'll feel better. Um, and so there weren't a lot of bodies available. Yeah. So there weren't cadavers rolling in for medical students. So they were actively trying to learn, right? Uh-huh. But the weird, but the worst part is like all these doctors were just f-ing creepy because yeah. they're just like, we need bodies. Yeah. And we need them now. So they. Were, I assume it wasn't like a common thing to be able to be like, hey, we need a body for science, and everyone would be like, yeah. oh yeah, science, we love science. Here so you like, go. They literally had to just go get the bodies themselves, or have someone physically be like, hey, when I die, you can use my body. Yeah. Um, and so they would they would hire these guys to go around and dig up bodies, and uh, they did change some stuff later where it's like people who died of the death penalty, automatically got who were, who were hanged or something. Their body yeah. was automatically up for grabs. But for a while there was but no. no they would just they would go to these 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 graveyards and they would dig up stuff and see it wasn't necessarily illegal. Uh huh. So the families hated it. Yeah, the families the, are, are finishing up the funeral. If you walked the body into gets town put in the ground, and you the, were a resurrectionist, yeah. they would store. They would chase you out of town with pitchforks. So they would beat you. Yeah, because they're like, that's f-ed up. It is. F-ed it up. is right. But the so the thing is, um, it's legally kind of a gray area because dead bodies uh-huh. aren't technically anyone's property, right? Yeah, that's true. Because you don't own like. I'm like, yeah, we buried a family member, but I don't. Yeah. I'm not saying I own that family member no, anymore. It's no. just a body in the ground. Yeah, it's just a space. Um, so that's kind of the argument they would use. Um, and so they're going around, they're digging up bodies uh, all over the country, stuff like that. Um, so you said that you said your uh, brother uh, brother's not feeling too too good. Yeah, do you? Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's been sick for like I don't know, uh, must have been a couple months now. He can barely get out of bed. Would it's, you say it's wild. he's like? Oh, like about to die. I, I mean, were you guys thinking about burying him when he dies? I know this is kind of a tough question, tough time for yeah, you guys. I mean, are you? Do you? Do you <laughs> want a graveyard? Are you gonna put him are in the you? backyard? In the backyard? You think? <laughs> backyard? Well, I don't think they had backyards back we then. We were gonna this do is like my garden. Yeah, we we're gonna do kind of a big ceremony. Maybe bury him under the tree. Sure, which day? Which day is that going to uh, be? Well, Tuesday? I we don't really know you well Tuesday. enough to invite you to the Tuesday wedding. Tuesday maybe, and then like, will you guys be? You know. Pfft, Probably inside, like, grieving for a couple of days, you think? Yeah, it was my... Like, son. you won't be going back to the cemetery. Yeah, it was my right? brother, so it's yeah. just like, I mean, we're going to go place flowers at the grave. Okay, okay. Maybe, like, maybe do that in a couple, in, in a couple weeks, I'm, you think? I, I don't know, man. I you thought like maybe... you a little bit of time. It's still pretty you know? fresh, so I was thinking maybe maybe I'd go back the day after. So you might be back Wednesday, but Thursday, pretty pretty solid. I mean, I don't know why it's, Free. it's necessary. I don't know why this is related, but I guess, no reason. I guess we're, we got to run some errands on Thursday. Can why? I borrow the shovel, by the way, that you have <laughs> in, in, in the backyard? Are you sweating? The shovel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Could you imagine? It's quite and a so, job. Yeah, and so it, it's crazy, right? So they're... Um, they're digging up these these goddamn bodies, and like the families are like, "Don't yeah, take our family members, that. please." Yeah. Um, and the the doctors are like, "Yeah, bodies. Let me get the bodies." They're just <laughs> cutting them open. They're doing weird <laughs> with them. There's like a billion stories about how it, like it was weird. Like they would just be, like throw the bodies in the basement after they're done. I'd be like, like to donate my body to science, but I feel like they'd be like use it as an example of like what not. <laughs> Could you? <laughs> it's like in class, they're like, "This is a healthy body, and this is his body," and then they just kind of put it side by side. Um, they use it as like warnings. Um, do, do you remember? Did you have the cadaver thing in high school too for anatomy class, where um, you like got to go and see like a live? Cada- not a live cadaver. Oh, oh God. <laughs> a zombie? Yeah. Uh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> uh, where you uh, got to, ma'am, like, are they... Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Fearman, are they supposed to scream I when think, we cut them? I think they had... I think I got yeah. to be there for a so cadaver thing. You, you got to go to... I don't think we got to like cut on them or anything. No, no. I don't think they let us perform yeah. that part of but it. But I, I did do several dissections. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, in college, we, um, we dissected a pig. Like yeah, a, it was a baby pig, and we named it Notorious P.I.G. That's pretty solid. Yeah, it was pretty a, solid. I thought it was a good name. And you got to just, like, pull out all the parts that you could throw on the grill later, you know? Yeah, and the weirdest thing is we weren't allowed to wear contacts in that classroom. 
because yeah. the formaldehyde and like the stuff they use to keep the could bodies, like burn your eyes. It will fuse your contacts to your eyeball. Oh my god! It's well, that in, sounds like pretty good. Right? Like, wouldn't that be like, like LASIK? Oh, so this is like eye surgery. Like, this yeah. is what I could pay thousands of dollars for, but uh, with formaldehyde, it yeah. works out. So so the, the last part of this is, yeah. um, so they weren't popular. So all these richer families, mm -hmm. um, so the poor families couldn't really do anything about it because they couldn't, they couldn't stop this from happening. Yeah. So some of the richer families are like, okay, they hire guards for the graveyard, which would shoot resurrectionists, beat them up. Um, okay. And then, you know what they also did was they would trap the coffins. I'm talking like uh, there were a few where they run, like kind of like lined them with rudimentary explosives. Oh my god! So some resurre resurrectionists will actually have been like blown up, lost legs, like Jeez. have been maimed because like um, they they start digging and like uh, like uh, or they'll um, there's something in the coffin where a knife comes out or like there's like some weird traps, <laughs> booby traps. But they basically would booby trap the graves because they're like this is the only way to keep someone from stop taking wow. the body. And suddenly like you're becoming Indiana Jones just to get this body for you the creepy scientist. You have like a scientist. sack of flour, you're weighing it and you switch it with the body. The guy asks for the body. It's like you're a scientist, right? He's like, si yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, like, yeah is yeah, this yeah. your lab? Because it just kind of looks like a like a shack. He's like, oh no, no. And like, how do you go about is. delivering that? Like. Mm -hmm. It's obviously like, do you still carry it in the coffin? And they're like, they're, you probably use that bag there. They're like different states have. of decompose unless you literally attend the funeral as like someone in the back and be yeah. like, I am so sorry for your loss. Um, and then like while they're talking, you're just like digging up the grave. Yeah, like oh, sorry, I left my wallet in here <laughs> yeah. when we were burying he has, him. He, yeah. he owes me twenty dollars. Yeah, I'm just gonna take it back. It's a cool thing. Like, don't yeah. worry about it. It's just I. It's like a bit we had in real yeah. life. I just I realized that he wasn't dressed in his best clothes, so yeah. I'm just gonna go change him yeah. out real quick. Because I don't know. It's not like man, please stop crying. Carrying a body through the town is gonna draw some looks. You know, it's gonna have at least a couple people be like, hey, I wonder why he's got that body. Um, with him, so yeah, it's definitely going to draw some suspicion. But wow, what a what a career! I, see, I like the theme of these ones of late because you're right. In in history, there's a lot of really weird ass jobs. Super that people weird jobs. We weird jobs. And like, um, I'm sure like the harder I look, the better it is. So thanks for tuning in to Salty Dalton's Incredible Brain Explosion Full Body Learning Experience. We'll see you next week on the, <laughs> the show. Yeah, we will. And then, like, the PBS credits start to roll. Oh, my God. I love the show. Like, come, thanks, on come on yeah. and zoom. Come on and zoom. Zoom, 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 uh, zoom. And it's got, like, the, the credits roll, and it's, like, you in the studio, like, just, like, you can't hear it. You're, like, waving at people. Yeah, like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and then, like, the thing comes on the screen. It's, like, brought to you by Fremulon. Um, Fremulon. Yeah, you know Fremulon? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, nice, nice. They do the Superstore, I think, right? They like do Superstore. Yeah, yeah Superstore is great. Did that tell you about Superstore? Yeah, I've watched every episode. It's amazing. Yeah, it's one of my uh, favorite shows. Superstore, and they do, uh, I thought they didn't do The Office. They did um, oh, Parks and Rec, maybe. Par it could be Parks and Rec. Like one that. of those shows Fremulon does, too. Um, Time to move on to <sighs> just a. Just I've got a, two good ones. I've got two subpar ones. It's and time I'm like good, I for fishbowl. Like, all right, I think I'm just gonna go with the dumb one too. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, oh, oh! Welcome to fishbowl. It is time for fishbowl, the segment where we pitch terrible or useful inventions or investment ops, short for opportunities. Wow, dude, you're I invented hip, that. You're hip with the lingo now. So, how would you like to do this? Would you like to participate first or second? Um, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. We're going to start the timer. The fish have filed into the room. Thank you, fishes. Thank you for hearing me out. I'm not sure why I'm the only one that can speak English, but <laughs> such is my nature. I'm cursed. <gasps> There's no water in here. <laughs> have you seen that comic where it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like teach a man to fish. Um, it's like, uh, and he will be fed forever. And the other one's like, teach a fish to man, however. <laughs> That's and funny. <laughs> he'll like live a complicated existence. And he's just lying in this bed as a human doing taxes being like, what am I? <laughs> That's funny. Is that like a far side cartoon? <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. I thought it was really funny. I love it. I love it. All right. 60 seconds on the clock. You may now pitch us your opportunity. All right. Um, so... This is going to be pretty simple because I think by the end of this, you're going to understand that this is a smart investment. The world is a scary place out there. Sure. Um, there's all sorts of things to be scared of. Uh, robberies, uh, brain tumors, uh, muggings. 
But you know what? Uh, something we don't take into account every day is the wildlife around us. Today, I'm bringing you Snake Watch, a wearable device that alerts you when snakes are nearby. Uh, special snake sensing technology. You like that alliteration there? Snake sensing technology of tomorrow today. It's a uh, wearable device where it will um, it will basically go off if a snake is somewhere in your perimeter. It's it will allow you to stay on ahead of the snake, stay ahead of the game, and and and, and be a safer individual. Never again wander in fear, wondering where the snakes may be. You have Snake Watch on your side. And this, this Snake Watch. This was the better idea of the two. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. Snake, it's a snake. Snake watch the the wearable snake detection device. So I think the obvious question is, how does it know that a snake is nearby? Uh, that's proprietary. Um, but basically, it I I can divulge that it it does use uh, a special form of uh, infrared and uh, so ultrasonic does like, waves. So do you like pull up the app on your phone and no, it shows you all uh, the snake locations in your like area? A, it can it can look just like this this G Shock here. And what uh -huh. happens is if if a snake comes within um, I don't know twenty feet of me, maybe even thirty feet. Probably closer, you know, to be safe, we'll probably, you can set the, the, the zones of sure, detection. Sure, but sure, sure. The farther off, the better. Um, a lot of clients like the 100-yard option. Um, and so if, okay. if there is a snake within 100 yards of you, your watch will go off. Um, and basically, um, the farther away you move from the snake, the, the quieter the watch will get. You know where that watch would be helpful is Snake Island, it, where it, there's oh, snakes see, everywhere. That thing would go off 24-7. So yeah. it's just... It's a way to stay ahead of nature um, yeah. and stay ahead of the game um, because I feel like the last thing that you want to happen to you going <laughs> to work is getting bit by a snake. You yeah, know? yeah. I feel like there's a very specific part of the country where this would be useful. Well, yeah, but it also it's for the everyday man um, because... Yeah, you encounter a lot of snakes in your life? Well, that's just it. How many snakes are around us? Like you go no to like idea. a Warriors game, there's Kevin Durant starts going off. Snake. <laughs> Get it. Snake. <laughs> Yeah, people call them one. Uh, um, that's a basketball joke, <laughs> nerds. Um, um, but yeah, like so, so it, it would be that because, like, guess what, Ben? Um, how much does it cost? What if I had a spider sensor? What if? What if I? That would be helpful. You, See, that would I be a could, useful invention. What if I could tell be you a better how many spiders were in this room at one time? It would blow that would your mind. That, yeah, that would be because great. Because guess what? You don't have that knowledge, and so. Yeah. This, that is a this gives you times access. more useful than a snake sensor. No, a, snake? a spider sensor would be great. Because I think a no, lot of people because would guess buy what? It. There's only okay. Uh, if a spider bites you, there are literally only like two kinds of spiders that will really give you a bad time. Yeah, but the likelihood of me encountering a but spider in this basement. Snake, there's probably a spider in this basement right now. You get bit by a snake. You're there's definitely done, not though. a snake in this basement. We don't know that because you're not wearing the watch. That's what, what I'm saying. It's like. Pants. It's the burden of knowledge. <laughs> like, if you find out there are more snakes around you than you originally thought, you're going to be a much safer person. Yeah, or I buy this device. It never goes off. <laughs> and I go, I wasted fifty nine ninety nine. dollars well, 99 Well, guess what? You know what you did do is yeah. you bought peace of mind. Oh, my God. And you know what? This guess is only what? useful for take nature the kids, walks. Take the kids camping and never run into a snake. I will say, I did, when Abby and I went on a nature walk, I think in like Ashburn. There's a kid who almost stepped on a snake in front of me when I was in Boy Scouts. Yeah. It was coiled up, ready to strike. And a, a leader had to knock him out of the way and be like, look on the ground. It was a copperhead snake, like Whoa. all coiled up. Yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, when we went on a nature walk uh, like a year or so ago, it was a very skinny path. And like... If, and if you weren't looking down, like we we were walking, and then suddenly I you noticed have to there was a snake. Feet, yeah. There was a snake literally on the path, head up, like staring at us, and we were like, "Holy crap!" We like stepped back. For you a know what? Bit, Guess what? Down. You would have had that go off a hundred yards <laughs> earlier with a f snake watch. Uh, yeah, you're right. For yeah. that one <laughs> I, situation, yeah. it would have been helpful. A hundred different situations. Okay. Anyway, what do you what are you willing to pay me here? Remember how we used to like say, two. "Oh, we used to say, I'm asking for two. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm asking for." Uh, I'm asking for $123,000. Now we should say... For 5% stake in my company. Yeah, okay. I'll give you none of that. Now you should say <laughs> what? how many uh, coins you think it's worth. Because you get out of five, out of five coins. Um, so you have you have to tell me... It's easily a three and a half Okay, star. so I give you two. So I'm, I'm going to settle for two uh, on that. Because I think I like the if you changed aspect, it to though. the... Okay, yeah, you can offer that. I'm not giving you any of that money. Um, okay, I think our, if you change it to a spider... I would uh, up that to like a four star. Okay, what if I told you that <laughs> after um, we didn't want to um, give away this secret so early, oh, but we actually have yeah, several have different one? Yeah. models. Yeah, yeah interesting. Not only I wanted we, to give you that idea. We have spiders, we have crickets, we have one. Crickets? For, we, Why would I need a cricket sensor? Oh my God. Oh, you're so f 
ignorant. <laughs> what ignorant? Do you have any idea the damage crickets can do? They don't do any damage. In- Cockroaches, that would be useful. These are all <laughs> useful ones over what you're sa- Snakes and crickets. Yeah, this is a great watch. Fifty nine ninety nine. Buy it at Target. Um, forget that. Just forget it. <laughs> Now it's on to some useful inventions. All right. right. Welcome to Fishbowl. Um, you have 60 seconds on the clock. Why don't you give me your best shot? Sure, sure, sure. So we're all used to this situation by now. It's laundry day. It's time to wash my sheets. Sheets are done. Bring them up to the bed. Oh, God. This again. I have to stretch it over this corner. And then I got to, oh, God, stretch it over this corner. Nothing's fitting. I don't know which way it's going. This is so difficult. No longer because what we have invented are zippable mattress sheets that go basically the way this works is it's a giant ziploc bag it's a giant ziploc bag and it goes around the mattress (laughs) and then all you have to do is lift the mattress up real quick (laughs) zip it down and now you have a zippable mattress sheet and it will all the zippers on the underneath side it's covered by the mattress you don't have to worry about it getting in anybody's way it's machine washable obviously but you no longer have to deal with that welcome to the mat zip the zippable mattress sheets it's mat zip all right uh what do you what do you uh any, any follow-up questions on that? Well, well what, what, what's, what's, what, are you, what are you asking for specifically? Um, what's the level of investment, the uh, LOI? For here? about 10% of my company, uh, 10%. Um, I would need at least uh, $1.5 Hey, Okay. Um, so just to, just to clarify here, we're just going to do some, sure, just sure, some sure. admin questions before sure. we give you our ruling here. Yeah. Um, so I get it. Um, you really started to have me for a second yeah. until I kind of thought about the logistics of this happening. So, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, so you put, you have to put the mattress inside of a giant bag. So it's very easy. Would, I'm just going to say, would, would lifting up the mattress to get it inside of a bag be probably more effort than putting on a fitted sheet? No. No? No. No. <laughs> no, it's a very big sheet. It s- zips right down the middle. All you do is you open it up, you place it over your mattress, you lift it up real quick, zip, and you're good to go. Fits all mattress sizes. All comes in many colors and Interesting. machine oh. washable. And it's just one zip, and right, you're is it. it. Is it like microfiber? Is it jersey knit? What are we talking? <sighs> um, Egyptian you know, cotton. Uh, there's a couple different models. Hasn't reached Egypt yet. Um, we're waiting <laughs> on that. Um, but there's a few different, I mean, what yeah, a dumb joke. It's whatever, whatever you want to pay really, um, is what $2 you can get. is what I'm willing to pay. Oh, no, no, not you as the investor. You have to pay a million, but, um, but yeah, I think it's, it, you no longer have to stress about stretching. You've got a mat zip now. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll, real quick, just in comparison, I'll tell you my other idea. Okay. The stair slider. It's two handheld no. things. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. You know, no. you're tired of walking down the stairs, but you see those long railings. You'd love to, like, slide down on your butt, but you're afraid of, like, breaking your arms. It's a little cup that has, like, a center part for the railing, a and it, it has a handle. So it's, like, it's it's like it's not a suction cup, but it goes kind of like this. And so it's got a middle part for the railing, and it's got a handle, and you can put them both on the railing and slide down. At what, Mach 6 until no, you no, hit no. the ground? No, no, it's a quick It's a quick slide. Boom. All right, now I'm down to the other staircase. Boom. But so rather than using your hands, you use these because it slides down faster. So you hold up your own weight and you attach death sliders to we- yeah. To, so to that's rails. the idea. I'm not asking for investment. In, okay. But I just wanted to let well, you know. Well, compared to that, that one, um, <laughs> there's one, a lot of lawsuits. Those are I don't stri- know. I'll that, give you like, strategy there. I'll probably give you two and a half to three stars. Um, Only I, three for the Matzo. I'll tell you what. For 30% in your company, I will give you $250,000. 30%. So more for less. Yes. This is genius. I mean, yeah, yeah obviously. More for less. I mean, yeah. think about how much money you're saving. Yeah, you're right. I'm saving so much money by having you invest in my company. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go with that okay. offer. I'm surprised you didn't go at least four stars on this because this is a problem that we all have. It is. No, but uh, the, the, see, the thing is I'm having a really hard time because like- Is I it get, the visualization? I, I get you say that lifting up the mattress it's and not, zipping it is like- easy as pie but like it is you still have to get the entire bottom part of the bag on the mattress mm-hmm. and to me that's like the same as if i were to just do it on a fitted sheet nah you haven't done it yet though so don't knock it till you try it as they say in the you biz. know what'd be cool is if you had um it's so you know how no one uses a top sheet do you yep. use a top sheet um, i don't i just use the the fitted sheet yeah yeah 
So you take a top sheet, right? Yeah. And you 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 throw it over the mattress, uh-huh. and then you 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 click a button, and it's got like magnets on the bottom, and it becomes a fitted sheet, so you don't have to move at all. Yeah, that's not that, this though. This is like a giant Ziploc bag for your bed. The mat zip, zippable mat mattress zip, sheet. Yep. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, speaking of our genius, of my God, we've got some more genius coming right at you. Roll them. Action. Oh yeah. Hot. Hey. Hey. It is time Ow! for Pilot House. Oh, oh, oh. Feels like we're in like a honky tonk bar and we just started standing up on the bar and uh, swinging our arms around. I'm line dancing. You see that? Yeah, I saw that. That was pretty good. Have you taken lessons? Every day in my life. Every, that's every time I wake up. Um, do life. you want pasta? Sure. Ashley's after to make us pasta. Yeah, that would be. That sounds delightful. Cupcake, pasta, God. You guys, what's next? So <laughs> you you doing, adopt me or something? We're doing this thing where, um, so we've been, um, like, just to, so, like, if you ever think you're spending, like, a lot of money in one week, so we're doing something called a freeze. And so for an entire uh, entire week, <coughs> like, Sunday to Sunday, um, we're not spending any money. Jesus. So, well, I'm sorry, it, you can you can spend money on gas. <laughs> I can't. We're doing the freeze. I can't pay you, <laughs> bills. So, <laughs> it's like, so uh, besides gas. No, this and, like, is a good bills, idea. Yeah, yeah, so, like, any extra, like... Sure. You stop by the convenience store. Like I would sometimes stop by and pick up like a, a green yeah. tea and gummy yeah. bears and stuff like that. So, <laughs> child, <laughs> we're a child. So like, so we're doing the freeze. Um, ah. And so, uh, Mr. Freeze. Otherwise, uh, yeah. So uh, we we've been like cooking all like uh, we brought lunch every single day. Normally we buy lunch once a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I gave that up. And so we're we're doing a freeze for this week, and then we'll go back to our normal. Yeah, it's probably smart. Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm fine with pasta. That works cool. for me. Um, Pilot House. I'll go first this time because you went first for Fishbowl. I do have one here that I'd like to pitch to you, um, Mr. TV Executive. Um, God, dude, my tattoo is just the scabs. Oh, yeah. It's the it, worst it's part. It's finally peeling now, mm-hmm. but it's just like it's so – it's just yeah. one giant scab. Yeah. Oh, my No, God. I know exactly what you're feeling. It is the worst. And I still have the lower and half it's just of my like, arm to go. And it's like sore, and it's just like – it's a lot. No, I've I, been barely – this is the most motion I've had in yep. like four days. Yep. Yeah, no. Uh, enjoy it's, that. Enjoy that. I've, I've been there. Um, so here's my, my pitch for this television show. So it's a competition show, and here's how the competition works. Each okay. contestant. Our shows are getting like more like we're we're really into like <laughs> reality shows and competitive shows. like kind of prankish like crazy situational shows because mine is like that too. I have two. Okay, okay. so here's the, here's the here's the competition. So the contestants each get assigned a Twitter account, <laughs> and or or it doesn't have to be Twitter, but we'll probably use that as an example. So they get a Twitter account that is. Um, of a subject matter that is picked at random. So it could be like a Twitter account about the, um, like a double A baseball team or something. That would be cool. And the, okay. and they start with zero followers. So each person has a different account with oh that they're God. assigned with like weird things. Like one's like a Bigfoot account. Like we one's have- like all this different. And the, the way the competition works is each week, the contestant with the least number of followers lo- uh, has to quit the show, gets, uh, gets eliminated from the show. And so week by week, people get dropped off, and then finally you have the champion who's able to take this random subject matter that they know nothing it about. It can't be bots either. Exactly. So it can't like be bots. It has to be it's real. It's all audited. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And they have to build up that account. So it's kind of like a today's age and society type of show. Right. And everyone starts with no, zero I, followers. I actually absolutely love that because yeah. like, and you, might, you and I must be on the same wavelength <laughs> because – so. Uh, I mean, honestly, like, I don't think you need to do a lot more with that show no. other than, like, because, like... I don't know a name it, of it, It but. could even be, like, a quick, like, uh, what do you call them? Like, a, like a, almost like a webisode, but it's just, mm-hmm. like, in between shows yeah. on an actual TV thing, it'll be, like, a five-minute clip, be, like, let's check in on the standings, exactly. and they'll do, like, little quick interviews with people, and then it'll show, like, the follower counts and, like, notable tweets. And part of the things they... tweets. And part of the challenges, like, the mini challenges they have to do is, like, you have to go tweet from like uh this like crazy location that has to do with your subject matter and you have to like and one is like a get a celebrity to retweet something exactly. of yours yeah exactly and, if and you, you get like bonus points you get bonus followers like yeah. added oh to it so God. yeah that's how that's how it works that's actually that's that's incredible <laughs> it's a game show for today's I world like that one. okay so like on the same note mine's called money talks okay and it's 24 hours uh it, so it, it's a 24-hour span contestants start with a single item 
and have to see how much money they can generate Ooh, in okay. 24 like hours. That. So kind of like getting more followers. Yep. They have to take if, – if someone gave me a, a full can of beer, I have yeah. to go try to sell that to somebody – and I have to take whatever money I have and maybe yep. I have to buy something that's worth a little more mm -hmm. and then resell it or wow. stuff like that. But I've seen you that on to, YouTube sometimes with some people, so I like that you idea. You have to kind of like trade up. It's like, yeah. a, like a white elephant present game where you tr you're trying to turn whatever you have into something that's worth more. And then so then it's all the contestants at the end – like they get valued at okay your item your final item is worth this their final item is worth that and like the person with the highest valued item wins yeah and it or it could just be like yeah. money be like uh, or, you yeah. started with they a sold can, it for that you yeah. started with a can of coke and you ended with thirty five dollars in twenty four yeah. hours that'd like, be pretty solid in twenty four hours like that it'd be incredible and wow. so I think it, it would be kind of interesting and maybe yeah. you could make it longer but like um. You could have, you know, and like I'm saying, like you could go around and be like, this bottle was found in an ancient like boat wreck. Yeah. Um, it's like, and each contestant like, has a camera person following yeah. them and, the whole time. And they go and they try to they try to do this stuff, and you can use I like, like that. underhanded means if you, as long as you like, you can't get caught by police. Yeah. And it can't be anything like can't be anything uh, illegal. Um, you can't rob anyone. Yeah. But you can like <laughs> try to sell them stuff that isn't real. <laughs> the item is a gun, and this is a bank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that's not how the show works. Um, I, I like think that, that would be, like be kind of cool. It's like the same kind of concept. Because any, anything where you're like going from nothing to something is like That's is what impressive. you want to see. Yeah. Yeah. I like that idea a lot. Do you have a name for the show at all? Money Talks. Oh, yeah. Money yeah. Talks. I like that name. Um, yeah. So, and then the other one that I had, it isn't really, um, the, the name's a little long. It's, it's like, can you save this plane? But like. <laughs> okay. So, it, so basically, uh, you know how like um, in airplane and stuff, like does anyone here know how to fly a plane? Yeah. Um, so you get somebody to get on the airplane. They think they're taking a normal thing. <laughs> um, it's 100% safe. And the airplane could be 100% fake. So yeah. it could be one of those ones that like pretend like it's uh -huh. uh, like kind of like simulator. <laughs> um, but they're, they're just in there taking a normal plane ride. And then something happens. Like maybe someone has a heart attack. Oh, God. And they go, um, there's a doctor on board. And everyone besides you is a plant. So mm -hmm. they all are supposed to do something specific. So there are going to be a couple people that go like, he's a doctor. Like I saw him, yeah. I saw his car saying he's a doctor and they're going to make you try to save someone's life or they make you <laughs> so try you mean to. They're going to say you're like, he's a doctor. Yeah. Are you a doctor in real life or no? no. Okay. They're just going to be like, this guy is like, you'll just go in a weird situation. Yeah. So it doesn't, it won't always like, be I'm like. Not, I'm not a doctor. If, like, the plane's, no, if the plane's crashing, like maybe um, something happened where everyone ate, uh, whoever didn't eat peanuts or something, yeah, yeah. they all like passed out and it'd be like, Ooh. the pilots are like out. I need someone to help me land this plane. And then that Ooh. person has to try to land the plane. Maybe that's it. So you've got cameras like all over the place and it's just a simulator. It's it's, it's yeah. pretty much a simulator, but it, it's got all realistic and like the windows are electronic, like your little dumb invention. Yeah, you should make like a, a dumb invention, which, oh, you mean the fish thing, the fish window? No, the, uh, the, the window that showed oh, the yeah. sunny day outside. Yeah, because what you could do is you could take a real plane, make modifications so the cockpit is all fully like screens and simulations, yeah. and it, the plane There's doesn't no actually actual move slide, anywhere, yeah. and then like, so when it takes off, it like just, sh just it'll you shake, know, it'll, like it'll that. make it feel as real yeah. as possible. Nice. Because you've got on like it's those 3D rides and stuff, yeah. So this person is supposed to have no idea that they're not actually flying to like Delaware. So is the whole show like a like they've got all these cameras? It's like just a reality show. Like what is this person going to do? It's not like a competition, right? It's no, just it's like, just what like are they it's do? like what are they going to do? And if That's they land if they land the plane successfully, maybe they get like a, like a bonus prize or something. Be like, hey, thanks for doing a good thing. Guess what? You landed the plane. Here's a free ticket. Some to, guy just like opens the exit door, like, jumps out. Here's like fifty thousand bonus miles to something, like oh. or something like that. But like, there's people who jump out of the planes. Yeah. There's like, um, they jump out and land. You on could them. have all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, where they go, like, um, they like they get you to the door and they'd be like, you need to get off this plane. Like, there's only one parachute and yeah. we want to save you. Ooh. And like, you have to be like, what? And you and they'll <laughs> do the thing where it's like the wind's whipping by. Yeah. Maybe they'll do a. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll do yeah, some kind of... Yeah, we have one parachute left, and it's between you and this child. What are you going to do? Yeah. And then it's like... Stuff oh. like that, but I think that'd be kind of interesting. I like that I like that situation to be put yeah. in, because it's just like, how do people, how do normal people react to And it's like, no one who knows how to like land a plane, and then they're basically going to have to get... They either try to do it themselves, or like yeah. air traffic control is going to try to walk them through it, and they're going to see if they can do it. That would be fun too to have some of that element in there where like quick get on the headset and like they're talking they're like trying to direct you and how well can you take the direction under that stress and pressure and like all that stuff and then like the crackling like of the directions like goes out it's like yeah the, the, the most important thing you got to do is <laughs> and it cuts out and and like, what is like, it what? what is it and sure like you, you can barely see from? anything in those cockpits yeah. nowadays it's all electronic so like you you yeah. just have to feel the plane and wow. like 
It would be pretty crazy. That would be sick. I think you get some cool. Hollywood in there, yeah. like a former Hollywood special effects artist, and they oh, like they, do it all the up. The things you can do with simulators nowadays, like oh, 100%. I like it. I like it. That is Pilot House. Those are some of our in, uh, inventions and some of our television show ideas. Now we go on to uh, a little bit of advice here. It's called Do's and Don'ts. Do it! Just do it! I don't think so. Do you need another one or are you good? I'm good. Do it! It's time for do's and don'ts. This is where we take your problems, your concerns, your questions, situations, and we turn... No, well, that's kind of call center. <laughs> do's and don'ts is we tell you what to do we and tell what you to what don't. We tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very simple. It's do or don't do. We, we do tell or you, don't do. We tell you what to do. Listen um, to us or, or face severe consequences. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. We are... If you've been listening to the last 32 episodes of the show, you know that we're geniuses, clearly. Um, yes. And we know what to do and what not to do. So the advice we give you is important so pay attention to that if you're in these very specific scenarios first scenario right off the bat this is something a lot of people do every day one of these open it's a restaurant what is your do for opening a restaurant so restaurants are tough because guess they what really o- are. opening a restaurant is hard you operate in the red they for often a long fail. time um, yeah and not every single one of them takes off um, so I think one of the keys whenever you open a restaurant um, the whole thing is 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 how it, it's basically if it looks busy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so okay. I, I don't know how many times you've been going down the street and you'd be like, oh, that like that that thing looks interesting, yeah. and it's like it's a ghost town in there. And you're like, it's probably not that good because mm-hmm. you don't have you don't see people clamoring to get a bite. So um, part of your business expenses for the first uh, you know couple months after you open is you're going to hire actors to come in, okay. stand in line, um, order food. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. And then like go out being like, that was the best burger I ever had. And what you're going to do is you're going to generate a lot of traffic. Because if people see that a place is popping, they're going to be like, all right, let's get in line, check this out. And before you know it, your entire crowd has went from a Craigslist ad to an organic uh, customer base. Mine was similar along those lines, except for instead of in-person support, what you're going to do is you're going to hire people to write online reviews, okay. but the reviews are not going to be like, oh, this was this place was great. It was going to be like... It changed my life. That and like the manager actually saved my baby when he almost fell into the oven. That would be awesome. Oven. And oh like my God. you have these like <laughs> very... Fell in the oven? <laughs> yeah, I don't oh, know. Yeah, let me, oh, yeah, I took the turkey out and I swapped it that's, with something else. That's one thing in our home <laughs> inspection. The guy was like, so one thing to note is this oven, it's tippable. And he starts like like shifting it around a lot where it's like, okay, well, we'll just never do that. We'll just never do what you just did. Try not to <laughs> use the mind. oven as monkey bars on a, or a swing set. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll try not to. If you to. just hang off the fridge, it's not going to really go well for you. It's like, well, that's great because I was never never planning on doing that. Oh, did you know there was this... Uh, uh, there's this hallway in the underground that I can do to take to work if it's like nasty outside? Yeah. And one of them says, uh, 10 kids every week are killed by falling furniture. And it's got a picture of this girl climbing like a dresser. Oh. Apparently there's a statistic out there. Yeah. Where like climbing, f- like furniture toppling over onto kids well, is like I- a Ikea. real that thing. That happened with Ikea for like one specific shelf that they had to take off the market. It kept happening. Oh like my one, God. Like one type of bookshelf. It was just like, you know, it was pretty wild. So that's what they told us was the oven. They were like, this is tippable. And they like kept like shaking it. And it was like, all right, thanks. You don't have these super strong babies that would rock this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so mine was go, uh, go, go, go. <laughs> mine was some online help. Yours was some in-person help. What's a don't for opening a restaurant? Don't. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, don't. Um, don't have a really pretentious menu. Yeah. Um, one thing you should do is like make your menu really like ironic or be like, uh, maybe you describe, uh, just be like, um, it just says, uh, fries or maybe like, uh, maybe something funny like, uh, yeah. 82 fries and it'd be like, these are 82 of our signature fries. Yeah. And maybe for like, uh, you put what looks like 82 on there or something, but like something like funny and like sort of doesn't take the restaurant too seriously. Sure. Because if I'm going to look up and see like a potato reduction with so-and-so, so, and yeah. I'll be like, oh, that is not into that. Well, first of all, like, I don't, I don't know what it is. Sometimes you don't know what it is. <laughs> no. And you're like, what am I if actually you're at a restaurant ordering? that like ha- makes it confusing for you? You can't ask because like, they'll be like, 
oh, you don't know what that is? And you're like, yeah. oh, okay, I shouldn't be here. And like, uh, yeah, so d don't be too pretentious. Have like That's a good. really funny menu. I was going to say, don't have a menu at all. Just ask the customers what they're in the mood for to eating. That would be interesting. So just so stock saying, like, a ton of ingredients um, and then literally have the ability to make like pretty much anything. And then like, just be like, what are you feeling? And they'll just be like, oh, um, uh, tacos. And you'll be like, great, I'll make you some tacos. <laughs> and then it's like, like treat the customer as if it's like your wife or your husband and they're hungry. And like you have like a limited pantry, but you know you have some stuff to cook. And like you're just like, okay, well, we've got – like think about it. Like go to the customer and be like, we got some pasta. Um, we've got like ingredients for like a uh, little homemade pizza if you want that. Um, taco. You know, like get present them a few options and just be like, any of that sound good to you? And make – so don't have a menu. Don't have a menu. At okay, all. that's interesting. So like – so you're gonna go up to them and be like, we yeah. have lettuce, cheese, all this other stuff. Yeah. Are you gonna be like, or are you just gonna be like, hey, what well, are you in the mood for? What are you in the mood for? Yeah. And then they go That's like this, start. and you could be like, well, I don't think we could. Uh, we probably can't yeah. do that, but we can offer you this. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I like that. You you're basically putting the customer in control, and yeah. if they ordered like if they got something they didn't like, it's just like yeah, the restaurant's a, called your choice. Your and choice. then people keep like thinking that it's like a abortion clinic, and they right. keep like they protesting keep it. Out front. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, no, no, it's a restaurant. It's a restaurant. They're like, we're you're pro choice now. Why? And then, <laughs> then yeah, all that stuff. Um, so <laughs> bake sales. Hey, bake sales. Okay. Bake sales. Um, so bake sales. Um, that's a that's a difficult waters to navigate. Um, so sure. one of the biggest things you could probably do to help yourself is please have the ability to use credit cards because girl yeah. scouts nowadays take credit cards mm -hmm. and that is a goddamn dangerous game yeah but like because like um you remember bake sales it'd always be like it's like insanely cheap prices because they're just their their only goal is be like hey uh it took me four dollars to make 80 cookies mm -hmm. i'm gonna sell them at like a dollar for four and i'd still you <laughs> still make a profit oh, basically yeah. and it's not for that person it's for a fundraiser but like I'm never carrying like singles or like, mm -hmm. I don't want to go up to them and be like, can you break a 20? And they're like, um, I guess. And it's, it's weird. So like if you have the ability to do credit cards, you're going to open up your market. Yeah. And you need to strategically place your bake sale. So that's my do. So okay. for, for place your bake sale is like- Outside of the dispensary? Well, so there's stuff marijuana. like that. So that's obviously a, a go-to. But another place, another place that I feel like people don't think about is set up- um, Now, it may involve a parental supervision, but set, out, set up outside a bar. Oh, my God, yeah. Like 2 a.m. Like work a very late shift. You will make a ton of dough. Because like some bars sell food, but it's usually just bar food. And like you, you may not want to buy that. Listen, but you walk out of the bar, you stumble out- There is- 2 a.m. You're waiting for your Uber. Is that a Girl Scout table? Like, that's incredible. And then you just go over there drunk and there buy everything. There's never been a time where I've left a bar drunk that I haven't been, like, Hungry. first step. Yeah. Like, if I saw a bag of just, like, brownies or chocolate chip cookies staring yeah. me in the face, I'd 100%. be like, there is nothing that's going to stop me yeah. from buying that right now. Yeah, you need you need a parent there to protect you in case, like, the drunk person, right. like, tries just to rob tries you. to rob you. But I think, honestly, if you're if you're okay with work, and Guess what, they're just going to hand you money or yeah. a card, and then you just, what you should do if they just hand you a lump of money yeah. is just put the appropriate amount of what you think yeah. constitutes that. They, they're not going to count. Oh, my gosh. It's the perfect yeah. way to raise money. I think that's... That's perfect. If, so if you combine the location with the ability to take different types of yeah. money, you will literally raise more. Like that's like the best business in the world. Yeah. Know your location. Uh, what's a don't for a bake sale? What's what's where somewhere there might be a misstep? Um. Let's see. Um. Don't don't make your stuff super super healthy. Like yeah. don't be like vegan, no bake cookies yeah, because gross. like. I got it. Yeah, if I'm willing to go to your bake sale mm -hmm. and go get some sweet, sweet, delicious mouth brownies, Ooh. like, I mean, I'm not going there to be like, to to feel good about eating something healthy. I'm going there to be like, I am justified by eating six pounds of brownies because guess what? I'm saving Jimmy who has a disease. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not eating this for myself. I'm no. doing this for Jimmy. Jimmy, he's got and so the disease. Um, yeah. So I think like just like make sure you do not over you know oversell the healthiness of it it's just yeah. going to turn people off because it's like oh weird i was in the mood for like you know if i'm going to buy a baked fatty, good yeah i'm not going to like eat a healthy baked good if i if i was trying to be healthy i just wouldn't eat it at all right um but 
So if I, I just give me the brown, give me the sugar, all that stuff. My don't is don't let anybody else on your turf. Look, there's situations where Girl Scout table set up. Maybe there's a Girl Scout table across the street set up. Here's what you got to do. You got to control your turf. If that means gunplay, that means gunplay. Um, you need to make sure that nobody else is on your trip. Take the rules from like w- watch shows like The Wire, um, any other like uh, drug selling show. Kind of get your tips from them yeah, 100%. and, and yeah, control run the streets. Yeah, run the streets. Control your corner. Be the kingpin. Um, you know, you make may sure- be eight, but you know, can you swing a golf club? Yeah, at somebody's head. Yeah, yeah. So one hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> you like, just hire like security for your stand. Extra, don't don't be afraid to uh, take control of like your property. Yeah. I mean, someone's en- encroaching on your turf. You need to send a message. Maybe you uh, maybe you put some laxatives in their brownies. Ooh, maybe yeah. you do something don't like that. Don't be afraid to play dirty. You basically maybe I kill mean, their p- mom. Every <laughs> brownie that they don't buy from you, mm-hmm. they're buying from somebody else. And you know what? You know what that money is going to do? It's not going to save Jimmy. It's going to no. save Bobby. And maybe you don't like Bobby. No, Bobby deserves to die. Yeah. Maybe Bobby was, you know, real bad. Real bad, Bobby. Real bad. Um, so definitely do that. I do think um, you may be... Oh, do you... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead and get that. Oh, jeez. I almost dropped my phone. <laughs> Sorry, I got to hear. Slide to unlock. Hello. A random word podcast. Remember when I totally last show... Didn't realize you were giving me a cue to play the phone ring. Yeah, because you do that every time. You there's yeah. never been a time where you haven't at least e- sure you f- it up, but you yeah, never I really not did. played it. I really f- it up. But that one, I was like, okay, well, it was one of those things. Like, yeah, the- there's our there's our bit. There's f- thirty episodes down the drain because I can't answer a fake phone. Yeah, there was a lot going on. There yeah. was a lot going on, but it is our call center again. The random word blog at gmail yeah, never- dot com. <laughs> We uh, oh we've got uh, we've got uh, uh, yeah I've, I've got a few here actually yeah we, we pulled some because uh, we had this this list running we didn't really get to it we got to one last time yeah so we we've got a few backlog but we also have a few yeah recent write-ins today so, the um the amount of email participation has skyrocketed yeah, recently so really, that's actually really. pretty cool it's gone up a lot so there was one and I, I sent you this there was one uh from uh, Matthew asking why didn't Nate the nutritionist use the med kit slash pack that he picked up so yeah there's is, a reason for every like there were um basically like I had written on a sheet of paper yeah. was uh, like really weird items, like a uh, one that's like a, a hat that said federal booty inspector. Yeah. And that gave you like armor. Yeah. So if like someone were to like do something to you, it'd be harder to hit you. Mm-hmm. And there was like one where there was actually a gun with like four bullets. Ooh. And you could have easily just, when you walked down to that lobby, you could have just shot the guy in the face and left if you hit him. Yeah. So Matthew, questions will be answered because we are, we will announce right now, next week, we will be doing, long time coming, a new version of the Drunkards and Dragons, a new episode of Drunkards and Dragons It'll coming at you next week. It'll probably be the same type of like, hey, you're in Set some up. weird yeah. place, but like, sure. it's going to be agnostic of whoever's done it before, and then we'll bring my dad on for another yeah. dual one. But so look out for that next uh, week. Um, we, we will do a small little mini Random Word podcast episode for sure. those of you that aren't necessarily a fan of Dragons yeah, and Dragons. Yeah. So my brother. You, you will you will get a random word, and you will get some, some really dumb stuff, and you'll be satisfied. So I have a couple more here in a row. They seem to be all from the same source, and judging by the time they were sent, may be intoxicated. There is a uh, one that says, bring him back. I want more intern Will, please. You guys are funny and all, but you know he's intern Will. It's hard to top that. They followed up. I'm sorry. We're funny and all, but bring back intern Will. They followed up two minutes later. Subject line, third mic. I'm really missing intern Will. Is that third mic? Please have him back on your program. This is from the same source. Um, They followed up one minute later. Uh, subject line intern will like if we didn't you know get the picture there um hi please have intern will on your next episode thank you sorry and this is not sent from intern will by the way and then the last one here um was sent one minute later after that you remember when i said all this stuff about intern will and i meant it yeah yeah and then the subject line says intern will for president Bring back intern Will. Intern Will 20. Why don't we just call it the Random Will Podcast? Yeah, I guess. And just have intern Will run the goddamn podcast. So I guess intern Will got a lot of love. Cool. Um, you know, now that makes us never want to bring him back. So I'll let no. him know. He's banned from the show. Forever. Um, forever. We do have it's another been a one. Nice ride. This is from a Dylan. Um, Dylan. And, and the subject line just says question from Dylan. 
Ben and Salty <laughs> Dalton, have, have either of you been in a physical or drastically verbal fight? Drastically verbal is an interesting way to phrase that. Have, have we ever been... I don't know if he means you and I, uh, like t- like fighting each other, or if he means just in general. Hmm. Um, so if we'll go, we'll go with you and I. Um, the, I think we've had, we've, been in. we've had some... We've had some really some light arguments. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, like, we wouldn't necessarily say, like, too many damaging things. No, It would just no, be more like no. we wouldn't agree with each other. Yeah, something. Like, I and, hate you forever. And so, you'd make, like, we'd make, so like, one, really one, passive f***ing yeah, comments. One that comes to mind that's a <laughs> classic is, so Salty Dalton in college was part of the Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. And Oh, um, my <laughs> hold God. Hold on, hold on. Oh, right. So I, one of the great I was things. Furious. One of the great things about the Dollar Shave Club is you can do these add-ons. And I'm actually part of the Dollar Shave Club as well. And one of the things you can get is a box of these, like, man wipes. It's like butt wipes. And they come in this uh, package. And similar it's, to, like, any basic, sort of wipes you get. It's a basic resealable package. Yep. So you have, like... It, like 40 wipes in one package. And, and for me specifically, I have, as I may have documented on the show, I have some issues with some wiping situations. And I, I actually use wipes in general in my daily They're life. They're great. They change your life. Um, yeah. And in college, I didn't have access to anything else beyond these wipes. So it was one of those things. Salty Dalton was gracious enough to go, hey, man, I bought these. I'm giving you permission to use them. Just make sure you close the, you know, close the bag. These are resealable. They, they dry out because yeah, they, they, dry they, out. They, they have to retain a so certain level of moisture. I, this may have been in a fit of, 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 uh, of whatever was happening. Um, went to the bathroom, opened, not just opened the container, but actually like ripped open. I, I guess I was having trouble with it, so I actually ripped open most of the container beyond just the resealable it part. Was, it was you. What happened was, is <laughs> <laughs> I go into the bathroom, I sit down, I start doing my business, yeah. I look to my left, yeah. and I see the thing, and I open up the top of it, and everything is dry. Completely dry. And I, and then I look on the end, and like- Zero moisture. Like a bag of chips, Ben had like ripped open yeah. the end of it, not even like the part <laughs> where, I guess he didn't see the thing where it says lift here. And then you reseal it. It was yeah. like opened it like a bag of chips mm-hmm. and then just put it back on the ground. And I lost oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my mind. I was like, Ben, I spent like $18 I think on I was in, I think I was in class and I got a text <laughs> yeah. from you just like, hey, man, did you use my wipes? And I was like, oh, yeah, I did. And then the fit of, of rape. I was just like, it just, I could not fathom why someone would... It, yeah. Oh, I says, fully 100% says, take responsibility for that. It's situation. like, uh, you know, those new Oreo packets. It's like, you know, you lift the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's basically like that. And if someone took a Probably scissors, like shredded it and open. cut it down the middle and was yeah. like, this will do. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I like, I, I just, I know that was I made, a big one. I know I made a lot of passive comments and I was probably, I was just like pissed for a whole week. Oh yeah. No, you were very mad and like <laughs> you fully deserved to be angry at me for that. Um, besides things like that, it's not been nothing too serious. Um, no, but have you been, when was the last time you were in like a physical or it was verbal like, fight? It was like middle school, like a physical thing in like a gym locker room. It's always one of those things where like you play basketball in gym and things get a little rough and then it carried over to the locker room. It was nothing like crazy. Um, just a couple like quick punches and then everyone like breaks it up and it's fine. Um, there was one time where this guy literally like I was walking because our, our middle school was one giant circle on the outside where the classrooms were and then like lockers in the middle part. So I remember I was just like walking. So then there's some like doors along the way as you're walking along. And I remember I saw this kid who was like probably 25. It was middle school, but like he was 25 in middle school. I saw him literally like ch- ch- holding a guy up against a wall by the neck, like choking this oh dude. Oh my God. And I literally like pretended I didn't see, kept walking, like went in the next classroom. I was like, hey, just let you know there's a guy like killing a guy back there. <laughs> and they were just like, what, what? And I was like, I'm not part of it. I'm just, there's a guy choking a guy. Let me just go. And then I like kept walking. I was like, "Holy crap, that guy is gonna kill somebody." But no. Besides that, I haven't. Been, besides like a little bit here and there, or me and my brother. I mean, we fought all the time. Right. Up, and there's like sure. wrestling. Um, yeah. I can think of like so like there's like a I've broken up like fights when people are drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And like you know you do the shoving and stuff like that. But like I haven't I haven't been I mean, like I an did actual flip Nick over my entire. Yeah. Fight. I haven't been like an actual like actual like brawl since no, like probably because um, we're not morons i mean yeah it's just like it's very so the last one was probably like freshman year high school maybe even like uh eighth grade Mm -hmm. there's this guy oh this is a crazy story by the way because i won't say the guy's name but he ended up naming his kid after me like actually yeah it was bizarre and like you know for sure he did that because of you. hundred percent um yeah i don't know man and he's like he was he had his kid when we were like in high school 
Like he'd moved away at this point. So like, say his name. I'll bleep it out. I was, his name is. I don't know. If, I, I vaguely remember that. Okay, I'll, I'll show you his his Facebook because it's just a stream of sad consciousness. Um, it's it's weird. So we were all like hanging out and stuff, and like he had like some weird like, I guess kind of like fits of rage sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. But we were like in his basement, and all of a sudden, he um, so I have two stories. This is the first one. All of a sudden, he just shut off all the lights, and like all of us are down there. <laughs> what? And we were like, "What's going on?" And then all of a sudden, I just get gut punched and then thrown against Jesus. the wall so fast, and I landed on his sister's dollhouse and, oh, cr- and no. crushed it. And like, I'm not even like, like I was small and like kind of skinnyish, but like I just crushed this dollhouse. And then like he, he like pushed some of the other kids who were there too. And then the lights came on. He was like, "Ha!" Ah. Holy and I crap. remember, like, this is the only time I've, like, ever, like, I don't lose my temper that often. Yeah. But I literally stood up. <laughs> Unless you dry out your butt, butt wipes. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I stood up and I said, I'm f-ing out of here. Nice. Don't ever speak to me again. Nice. And then, so I started leaving. And he's like, no, man, we cool. We cool. And I just looked at him. And then I just, like, kind of, like, dropped a little bit of a knee. And then I just, I punched him in the stomach as hard as nice. I possibly could. And he doubled over. That's well deserved. And then I just walked out. And then um, we weren't really ever friends again until like. Um, until he named his child after you. Yeah, it was weird. Um, and then the only other like when I was younger, we used to um, like slap box all the time. Yeah. And then the, there's this uh, one of my uh, first best friends before um, uh, I started. It was like must have been like really early in elementary school because he moved away and I spent most of my time at Alex's house anyway. Um, but he lived right next door to me. So mm-hmm. he's right next door to me. Our families are really good friends. We um, got, <laughs> we had watched something on TV we weren't supposed to. And it must have been some like Mortal Kombat type thing. Because we both got in this kiddie pool. Filled it with sand. And then we had lacrosse gloves that we borrowed oh from God. our neighbor. And we boxed each other. And the funny thing is like when you get hit, you kind of get like an, it's like a, it's an instinctual response. You get kind of angry. Oh, yeah. And so, like, you hit back, and then when you get hit again, you get angrier. Oh, of course. And so we're just, like, we're wailing on each other. And it gets so bad that it's funny. We, we both went like this, and we threw the gloves off. Oh, no. And we went bare knuckle. And we're, like, eight or nine years old. And we're, like, punching each other in the face. Jesus. And then we get so upset. It was supposed to be, like, a fun game. Like, yeah. we didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> well, let's go outside and punch each other. So he, he dumps and, like, he tackles me. And we roll out, and we roll down this hill. Um, at the, we were basically doing this on a hill and we land in these bushes and in the woods and like we get up and we get out. We're like, whoa, that was weird. (laughs) And we're like pissed at each other and we go home. We rolled in poison ivy. So we had poison ivy head to toe. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like it was all up in my private. It was all over my body. We had to miss school for like a week. And then we just like, we're like even better friends after that. We were like, that was wild, man. Man, We went through the shit, man. We went through the those are like the like two war like, buddies. Yeah, it was like it was some that's crazy. Like, wait, stuff. we did that to each other. But like, yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't go out trying to start fights. No, no, that's that's those are good examples. Um, let's see who else is on the call center here today. Um, Craig, twenty-one years old. Subject line: pizza problems. Craig works at a uh, local pizza joint, and it makes uh, me happy that you guys support local pizza places. We do, we do. Um, but that's not my question. At the end of the night, I normally get to take leftover <laughs> breadsticks. Comma sticks. after not. And it's, that's not my question. <laughs> but that's not my question. Um, so he gets to take home uh, leftover breadsticks and pizza <clears throat> that was never delivered or Bonus. extra made and stuff like that. Um, how much is too much to take? I also have to split with everyone else in the store and don't want to seem greedy. So how much is too much of the pizza to take is what he's asking, I guess. Leftover? How much is too much? There isn't such thing as too much as because it's free. Like, I guess you have to split it with the people, but like, huh? I mean, what I would do is I would probably just like, basically after each batch or like if you know something didn't didn't, didn't get delivered, yeah, I would have like a, a small secret storage compartment, a secret storage yeah, compartment, or like sure. one of those other hot bags, yeah, and just slip stuff into there throughout yeah. the night. And so at the end of the night, you go, hey guys, here you go, take it. I don't need it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm good. Like, I want you guys to have this. And then, and you then have this. you're walking away with a bag of pizza. Yeah. Nothing better than a bag of pizza in my and eyes. Like, honestly, and like, what else is to stop you? Because like, I get like, I don't, I don't know how detailed it is. And someone who works at a pizza place, maybe this guy, Craig, 
Craigie boy, if you could, if you could write back in and tell yeah, they me, they do pizza audits. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Is like, I get you have a certain number of ingredients, but like. Um, you make way more money off the ingredients than yeah. you do because if you're selling a piece of pizza for, or, or, or sorry, a whole pizza for $18, mm-hmm. you're pocketing a lot of that cash. It costs you probably 50 cents to make. <laughs> and so like, what, what the hell is stopping you from making your own pizza? Ooh, just bring home the ingredients. Literally do this, do this, make the pizza, um, or whatever order you're going to take, mm-hmm. add your additional secret pizza mm-hmm. in with it. Go deliver that to pizza. To your own house. And then, yeah, and then take one of the pizzas to your house or yeah. sit in your car and eat that pizza and be like, Ooh. I'm stuffed. I'm good. That sounds great. Yeah. You'd have leftover pizza and you don't even have to worry about like, because I don't want reject breadsticks. They're probably good, but like. I might need to go online and check out some pizza jobs. Yeah. Might need to, might need to get that. I feel that. like there's, a, there's definitely a hook up there that no one's exploring. Last one here. Charlie, 24 years old. He's a disgruntled diner employee. There's a customer who always sits in my section and orders the usual and is extremely rude and often tips 5% or less. I don't want to seem like I'm being aggressive, but I don't want him to be in this restaurant anymore. Or at the least, I don't want him to wait on me. Uh, or I don't want to wait on him. Uh, he always asks to have me his server as a server. How can I escape this hell? So it's a guy who... Hellish customer. So a guy who doesn't tip is super rude. Asks and for the requ- usual. And requests that you wait on him. So he, he thinks that there's a bond there between you two. It's just not there. That's not there. And he's and I, I, maybe, I mean, I don't know you, Charlie. Maybe your service is goddamn terrible. Maybe it is. And he's just supporting this business. But like general rule of thumb is like, you know, because we're not like any other country in the world. So like, uh, like in Japan, you can make a career off of working in a restaurant. They pay you a salary. Yeah. So you are not, they don't, you don't tip. You're not allowed to tip at restaurants in different countries. Mm -hmm. Like it, because they pay their workers enough to live. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) like, I get that. So like in a, in a place that's dependent on tips, when you're going out, you should probably be prepared to encounter some sort of tip. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know where the blame lies, but like, that's gotta be ridiculous. But as far as like getting this guy, cause it sounds like the, the plan is, I need to get this guy either out of the restaurant entirely or at least out of my section. What I would do is I would, um, I mean, honestly, I would probably f- like slip him laxatives. Yeah. In every, like in, in, in a dish or in a drink or something like that. And then he's just like, and every time he's like, oh my God, like you, your place is the worst. He, he might leave bad reviews, stuff like that. But think about it. He's going to systematically go through every item on the menu and not a single one of those will not give him explosive diarrhea. Yeah. And then he's like, I-, I give up. Like, I can't eat here anymore. And he's out of there. And when they do the inspection, because he's going to call the health inspector, you're going to pass because you're the one adding laxatives post creation of the meal. Yeah. So illegally add laxatives to every yeah. meal he has. And he's eventually going to leave the restaurant and you don't have to tip him. One funny story that Ricky used to tell me, because he, he worked at a uh, restaurant for a while and he said that there was um, like a, you know, class, high school, like, reunion class or college reunion class or something it's all these like old guys from like they they graduated like 60 years ago and they um they every year they always called that restaurant to put on their like reunion dinner and they'd always be like hey we're we need enough for like you know 30 people like the table set for 30 people which restaurants have to like you they, know, do that's all planning. Those, that's a lot of planning. That's a lot of planning. And, and they're missing said, out on 30 tables. And could. every year he said only like six people would show up so like six like 80 year old men would show up for this like reunion and they would have had the restaurant would have to go through the process of getting 30 tables ready six people would show up and then it would happen and like they even like push back at some point like hey like are you, you know, sure are you 30 sure people 30 are coming? coming they'd be like oh yeah yeah 30 people of rsvp we actually invited like 200 and 30 people are definitely coming and without fail every year six old men would show up and like tip terribly and it was like he was like he found it funny because he was like I, I i hate this restaurant anyways but he was always like i always got to get ready for the moose lodge club or whatever it's like they never actually come to this thing um yeah i was never i never really got a chance to work in the restaurant so i don't really have uh, i feel like it, it does give you a really interesting perspective oh for sure it gets um, you di- very used to the good and bad side of people yeah um very quickly and it's just, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm totally for the idea of people working in the services industry um, to get used to just how life is. 
because people are a-holes and then people are nice, but most people are a-holes and it's a great way to like learn that very quickly. Yeah. Um, 100%. So that about does it for episode 33. Again, you can reach us uh, at the random word blog at gmail.com um, to get on call center and suggest, uh, you know, segment ideas and invention ideas. Feel free to enter those in as well. You can do whatever you want in Just your email emails. us and, and Just tell please us. Please no dick. Anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one thing we definitely um, would not like you to do. Um, if you would like to send them, email Dalton at. Um, <laughs> Uh, salty Dalton at gmail.com. But uh, Salty Dalton, as we the new tradition here for the new season, we need a interesting phrase from you. I've got one prepared, actually. Okay, let's hear it. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. And that's it. That's, that's just, it. That's the phrase. Yeah. The phrase like, that pays. It's supposed to be mysterious. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. And with that, an episode is in the books. Sayonara, my sweet suckers. We out of here.